Better for me in the car yesterday with the, the slick conditions were not really ideal. So today uh, it's been a lot of fun really watching everybody else race and uh, being able to get out in the car, make a few setup adjustments because we've actually never tried to do anything with this car for actual time and speed. So I made a few adjustments today trying to get a little more time out of it, but really been enjoying it. The fans have been amazing. Thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you to Monster for putting this on. They've, you know, fourth year in a row that they've had this. It's uh, great to have such a supportive sponsor that's willing to do these things. And and really great thanks to all these drivers that come out and had fun with us. It's a great form of racing. It's very fun. And it's great to have a, a good set of guys that, that come out and enjoy this with me. It's really cool, obviously, to see the Hoonicorn out here. And only time it's, it's been here in the UK was, uh, I believe, Goodwood. It was on display before. But like you said, this is the first time competing with this vehicle because you're going to compete against the winner for bragging rights. Do you think you have what it takes to beat these guys? You've seen what they've been driving out here. You've seen the times. Do you have the tire? Do you have the car? Do you have, do you have the heart? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, we lost a lot of testing time yesterday. And like I said, I mean, today was like the first time I even tried a different spring on the car. So, it, you know, we'll, we'll see what I can do. A lot of wheel spin with this car. There's so much horsepower. It's intended to go very fast and very sideways. So kind of taming it for this course is a little bit difficult. But but, hey, I'll do the best I can. It'll be interesting to see how it does in the race because this is the first time doing something like this with it. And I uh, really uh, hope to put on a good show for all the fans. Last question. Why did you give the keys to somebody named Ryan Turk for that sweet vehicle over there? And how bummed are you that you're not behind the wheel of that sweet piece of machinery? Are you implying that that was a mistake, Jerry? It's a terrible idea. There's an adjective called Turk. You, you, he Turk stuff. So I don't, I don't know if it's the smartest decision with that one-off body kit. No, you know, I, I wish I could pilot both these cars all weekend, but, you know, it just is impossible. So, you know, to have someone like Ryan come out and put on a good show for everybody and really drive that car to its limits, uh, that's basically the idea that we had when we called him to have him come out and do it. So, but Ryan's a great guy, great driver, part of our Hoonigan crew, so really fun to have him along and fun to watch him do what he does with that car. All right, well, uh, thank you guys and gals. Thank you, Ken Blog. Round of applause for all our drivers. You ready to see them do battle here? Jim Connor Grid, European Gala 2015. Who's going to be the rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive? Who's going to get all the cash, the crazy car, all the insanity, and the bragging rights? Is Ken Block going to get beat? Is Ryan Turk going to get beat? We'll find out here at Jim Connor Grid, European Gauntlet. Jared Deanna, we're going to go live on television around the globe. So thank you for tuning in and watching. Let's go ahead and send it here at Santa Pod Raceway. You! Peggy 12. Your need for speed experience is rooted in today's urban car culture. Your garage is where the magic happens. Make iconic cars your own with the most authentic customization in need for speed history. Take a car from stock to stock plus awesome in a blink of an eye. Or you can enjoy near limitless options to spend hours creating automotive art. Visually customize your ride with the hottest aftermarket brands, including Rocket Bunny, Sabin Carbon, and Rauvelt Begriff. Equip the world's wildest parts to build your one-of-a-kind masterpiece. From side skirts to spoilers, fenders to wing mirror, tires, rims, and much more, almost every area of the car is available for you to craft. Once you're done with the parts, Need for Speed's brand new wrap editor will give you everything you need to let your imagination run free. Easily select from a range of options to create your perfect paint job. From changing the hue and saturation to getting that matte black finish you've always wanted, the wrap editor also comes with a huge variety of decals. Select graphics from leading brands or choose from a range of shapes and patterns but show off your creativity on each area of the car's bodywork and windows. Move, rotate, and scale to turn simple shapes into a multi-layered masterpiece. You have the power to create a vehicle that expresses your personality. Performance upgrades let you max out the potential of your cars. Beef up your engine to increase your horsepower, acceleration, and top speed. Switch out parts from your camshaft to your clutch, from your suspension to your ECU, from your nitrous to your turbo. 
personalized handling lets you find that perfect setup. Move the master slider between drift and grip or tune individual settings. Change tire pressures, downforce, steer range, brake bias, and more to set up your ride exactly how you like. Want a drift focus ride? No problem. More grip? You got it. Go deep and tune your vehicle's handling for specific events. Play your own way in your own one-of-a-kind car and unleash your personality on Ventura Bay. So welcome back to the Jim Carner grid final of the European Gauntlet. It has been an absolutely epic weekend here thus far and there is so much still to come. We had yesterday's last chance qualifier. We saw some of the fastest drivers on the planet come here to compete for a chance to make it into the final here today. And what an epic lineup. We just had Gerard talking us through the entire lineup of cars uh, and drivers that we've got out here. Not just rock stars from driving, but also our special guest drivers as well that have been down there in the buggy series. Uh, so far today here on Sunday, day two, and the actual final day of Jim Khan, and we've just had the uh, buggies have gone all the way through into their finals, and we've just done all the seeding for the rear-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive as well. Uh, the final battle we had there from two of our pre-qualifiers in the all-wheel drive, uh, Dimitri and Matt Miller, uh, there was a little bit of radiator fluid left out on the floor so uh, if anything a little bit lucky that it happened at that moment and not <laughs> earlier on in the contest we've still got Mr. Ken Block out there lighting up his tires uh, they're going to be coming out later on uh, I say they we've got Turk and we've got Ken Block giving everyone a little wave we're on board with Ken Block right now uh, appearing inside his car uh, the other way Ken look to your right brother you are live on air out to apparently somewhere close to 100 million people uh, a bit of an insight into what it looks like inside Ken's Hoonicorn, the uh, the world leader in Hoon driving. That thing is an absolute beast. Great to see it out here in the UK. And uh, of course, the winner of the all-wheel drive category is going to get to go head to head against Ken himself. Uh, it would be a privilege and an honor uh, to <laughs> <laughs> to uh, get the opportunity to race against him. And of course, uh, we got Turk out here. We just had a few words from him uh, and saying how privileged he is to be out here uh, behind the wheel of the world exclusive unveiling of that Escort Mark II that we've got here, the uh, British made Ford, the uh, Dagenham dustbin, uh, as that thing's known. Uh, an epic prize along with everyone else that you can win here today if you make it through onto the podium. But that opportunity to race against those two heroes in those two epic, epically famous cars uh, is another privilege as well. Uh, loads of things going on here. We've got uh, a whole paddock. The pits are open for all of our fans of Jim Carner and Fast Cars to go and look around. Uh, uh, you can make your way all the way around into the pits. There's a nice little bit of fencing going on there, so you can check out all of the mechanics at work on each of those cars. We've got the crazy carts out there for people to have a shot on. We've got some radio control car driving going on, and we're going to be giving away um, an exclusive replica of the Ken Block racing car in RC Virgin, which is an absolutely wicked prize. So a nice little bird's eye overview of Santa Pod here. You can look uh, over to the left-hand side uh, as we look at, as our viewers at the screen here. That is the one of the most famous drag strips in the whole world, the quarter mile strip. And uh, today is a run what you brung, and we can see people uh, driving all sorts of different vehicles. I think we just saw a, uh, a Model T Ford just sending it down the uh, drag strip there. Very similar speeds to some of our drivers in our straight that we've got here as part of the official Jim Carner track. Uh, we're seeing some pretty good. It's not as close to the quarter mile as the track beside it, but still a very fast track indeed. And uh, you can see here most of the surface water has cleared up from yesterday. Uh, almost monsoon weather. Uh, but last night we had a beautiful sunset and things have been drying out all throughout the day. And uh, we are very close to the actual knockout rounds here of the final of the Jim Ikana grid. So all are still here to come. Stick with us if you are watching at home and we're going to be back with you very, very shortly.
people like to relax on a comfy sofa on a Sunday afternoon, but it would seem some people have got a different idea. That's Ken Block, and this is Jim Carnegie in 2015. It's going to be amazing. It's fun to drive because it's a huge challenge because it's not just a matter of jumping the car and going full speed or driving with full commitment. It's a challenge to find the fastest way around the course, so that makes it fun. This weekend it's all about going sideways in a buggy that I've never driven before. It's easy to spin around. You need to be uh, careful with the, um, the handbrake. You know, and don't slide too much, get traction and get momentum out there. I'm trying to go as fast as possible, but put on a good show for the crowd is something that I've never had to do before. Here what you can see is two drivers competing on the courses, head to head, trying to get through the courses as quick as possible, and whoever gets through the entire thing and back to the start, uh, the quickest is the winner. And of course, any motorsport, any racing is always fun because of the chance you might win. So uh, with the opportunity to win makes it fun. It's not so much fun if you lose, however. What's up guys, I'm Ryan Turk. We are here at the 2015 Gymkhana Grid Finals at Santa Pod Raceway. I'm driving the 1978 Mark II Ford Escort that uh, Ken Block just recently released to the, to the world. And a uh, huge honor to be able to drive this car and compete here for my first time at the Gymkhana Grid. Uh, you know, this event is all about time. It's all about being fast on the track. Minimal drifting, which I've, I've learned actually. Uh, you can't be really sliding a car too much because you're just gonna waste a ton of time. You don't really want to be burning tires too much. It's more about just the grip and getting to the next obstacle, getting around it as fast as you can and on to the next. You know, we take off the start line. I'm launching in uh, first gear, up to about third down a straight. And then there's a line painted for the, right before the first turn where you have to initiate into oversteer. And then you come around that apex and you have to transition back around to a little figure eight section where you do uh, about a, a 280 degree turn and then you go on to the next to the midsection. After the figure eight, you get to the midsection of the course, which is arguably one of the most technical portions. A series of sweepers and J-turns, you wanna just try to dial the grip in as quickly as possible and use your handbrake to just get around the cones and, and barrels as quickly as you can. You come into the final section of the course, which is uh, donuts. So you come in, you're coming into this box at a decent rate of speed, and you have to do a complete 360 or one and a half times around the, the one donut box. Now you're very close to these obstacles, and if you move them a certain distance, you're gonna get a penalty on time, which you don't want. So you wanna be extremely careful and just leave yourself enough room. After the first 360 donut box, you wanna exit with as much grip as you can. You go around the next set of donuts, which is the, the big tires. You're doing a 720 around there. You make, get it to the finish line, get your time, and remember, you have to do this twice perfectly to be able to move on to the next round. Hello world and welcome to Gymkhana Grid Santa Pod Raceway. We have a beautiful day in the making of a great event. I'm Jared Dienda and with me, beside me, is just a legend. Introduce yourself, who you are. Uh, my name's Eddie Temple Morris and I am a petrol head non <laughs> and non-expert host, but glad that, that, that you're here with me. And man, I'm so amped to be here. Well, I, I think I think you're gonna you're gonna play the role of just like an amped fan. Of, I don't wanna say a newbie because you're far from a newbie. Like you said, you're a car guy, a petrol head. But you gotta think, Gymkhana Grid is is only four years old, so you're creating new fans every day, and hopefully right now we're creating some new fans, educating, dropping some knowledge to them because we have an action-packed day. Take a look at this. What do we got? So we got the timetable right here. We've got uh, we've got the quarterfinals, the semifinals, uh, all-wheel drive quarterfinals and semifinals. And uh, what's what's happening? At, what's, what's the next? Rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, third place playoffs, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive finals, and then remember, because basically we're gonna have a one, two, and three in rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. The winner goes against either Ryan Turk if you're rear wheel drive, or go against Ken Block, the head hoonigan charge, if you're the all wheel drive winner. That's basically like a video game. It's a hero battle. You finally yeah. you finally get to go against Bowser if you're if you're 
if you're Mario, right? So, so look at this, look at this amazing spectacle track. So basically the whole day has been, it's, it's like a competition to get to race against the legend. Exactly, exactly. Legendary cars, legendary drivers. And, and, and just because, yeah, the Hunicorn is sweet, has 800 plus horsepower. It's this all wheel drive, 65 Mustang. It's a crazy anomaly, hence the name the Hunicorn. It doesn't mean that he's going to automatically win. He's got to earn it. But again, it's bragging rights that are up for grabs. Yeah, and sometimes it's not it's not just the power that, that wins. It's not it's not a, a Santa Pod straight race in a, in, a, in a straight line. You've got to, the lighter, more nimble cars that sometimes just get get round those corners faster. All right, well, let's let's walk through here our top 16. Round one: Adam Elder versus Shane Lynch. But we're fun. but then again, Adam Elder versus Shane Lynch. Dean Newport Hall versus Bagsy. Hadley Fulbrook versus Sean Franklin. Danny Cross versus Dimitri Ilo. Richard Dolly Smith. Our Rads going against Rob Woodford in that Miata. Marco in that Toyota Corolla. That underpowered 150 horsepower against Liam Dorn. Dan Firmiger and then Mike Newland. Then look at that Luke Woodham, who is our defending. I might add. Jim Connor, Grid King. Then we have, again, a quarterfinals, round one winner versus round two, round three versus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's too easy. Advancing onto the semifinals, you have the qualifier winner one, qualifier two, three, four. They go against each other. You can see that. And then you have our semifinal win one winner going against our semifinal two winner for the finals. And who's going to be up top? You go against Ryan Turk. Now, this guy competes with the best of them in Formula Drift and across, across the world. He has an internet famous show called Turk. Now, it's, it's a verb. He can he can turk things. He can turk people. He's, he's an amazing dude, and he's driving an unbelievable car. What is that car exactly? Have well, you seen this thing? I showed it to you earlier. Yes, this is, a, this is an American legend, but in a, in a car that will evoke so many memories, especially for people uh, my age. I think they call it the Dagenham Dustbin. Uh, this is a, <laughs> this is a, a, a tricked-out Ford Escort. This is a, a Ford Escort that is probably least like an original Ford Escort that right. rolled off the, uh, the Dagenham line that, that has ever been. It's really cool. I mean, even the smallest details like the trunk hinges or the boot, as you call it, right? The, 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 the boot hinges are carbon fiber. Just those small little details show you that this car is next level. It has a one-off body kit from Kay Mora and the Rocket Bunny kit. But you know what? That's later on. Right now, this is the appetizer. We're going to build it up to a blooming onion or similar to our Chinese dinner. We kind of start off with a small appetizer and then boom, it was an end insane battle. <laughs> so here we go. Our first battle, Dean Newport Hall, and it looks like he is going against Bagsy. So Bagsy coming in here and, uh, you know, we'll see because both these guys are really drift specific. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we've, we've kind of walked through some of our previous rounds and those that have shined have found this perfect compromise between, between you know, drift and grip. So these rear wheel drive vehicles. So we have we have Bagsy here and, uh, and Bagsy's Bagsy from yeah Bagsy's from the Essex and uh, a great car culture especially sort of modified yeah. car culture in that great county and Dean Newport Hall from Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire yeah Dean Dean Newport Hall again he won the Irish FBS qualifier which is the uh, the Fieldtopia barrel sprint so uh, he won that so it qualified him to compete here at this European gauntlet. Here we go, Eddie and those fans watching across the world. Bagsy gets the jump out of this drag race start. Now they have to initiate, you can see that line there on the asphalt. Bagsy does just that, wraps it around the large Corbo seat, made for even a big guy like me, right? All right, Eddie, so we're wrapping, we're wrapping around the bollard, coming in through the barrel alley. Now remember, they need to navigate a particular direction, Eddie, and fans watching at home. So here, going out to that checkered flag, they'll zigzag back and forth. So start with the checker flag, the double barrel coming into the Samco. And uh, we're watching Eddie Newport Hall right now. So there he is. So I'm walking you through Bagsy's run, but Eddie Newport Hall, he's just a few steps behind. So now coming into the spin cycle this is where if you're a little wet, it's going to dry you off. We had a little bit of oil there on track. So that is actually absorbing. That's an absorbing uh, compound that will, that will pick up the oil and the fluids, making it not so slick. Yeah, so exactly. As, as Bagsy rounds it out, brings it on home. Okay, so also I got to point out, Eddie, you see him stopping in those white stripe block right there? Yeah, you've got to uh, you've got to stop in the block there, otherwise it's a it's a penalty if you overshoot, right? A two second a, a, a two second penalty, right? A two second penalty, but there are the unadulterated times given the penalties. So one minute. 0 0.5, 104.30, as uh, one of our one of our officials waving to his mom, and <laughs> Bug <laughs> Bagsy there is uh, is obviously 
he had that one minute time, a, and, a, a decent run there. And that one minute time seems to be, a, that's the line in the sand to try and beat, right? A, a, a time underneath one minute is a hot time. It's uh, the sub, the sub one minute is what we saw earlier today. We saw as, as you know, as low a times as 56.5 in the rear wheel drive. That was Adam Elder. He was the guy to beat. He had a 56.5 and a 57.5. So Eddie, remind the fans as far as, you know, you have one run, in lane in lane one and then lane two yeah because you've got mirrored exactly mirrored courses so you just literally just do it and then swap and then do it again you add the times together and the cumulative total the lowest time wins all right so who's advancing on we start with 16 work our way to eight four and then we have the finals and of course the hero final so there's the race result you see steve or excuse me i, I, I always call him bag uh, bagsy so <laughs> look like he didn't even have any penalties as of, as opposed to dean newport hall he did have some penalties there so that even contributes more to a deficit here we go eddie all right so dean newport hall there in what's called lane two it's the furthest from our announcing tower but for those of you watching at home he's on your left and Bagsy is there on your right. As you gotta close your door. You yeah. gotta close your door, Bagsy. <laughs> Come on, it's go, go time. Lock, lock it down, man. Send it as they get a little smoke in their face, making things a bit more dramatic and exciting. Nice initiation by Bagsy. Now again, this is a purpose-built drift car. What are, what are you seeing as, as a fan? Are you, are you seeing kind of him flourish, or do you think he's getting a bit lucky as Dean Newport Hall is kind of making some mistakes? Well, I just, I, it's just such a great combination of muscularity and pinpoint accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. So here we go. Pirouetting. Yo, look at that. They are tit for tat here. Oh, but Bagsy, you see him swing wide. You see him slow his RPMs down, and he slingshots out of the double-barrel checkered flag. All right, zigzagging through the course. And look at this, Dean Newport Hall, quicker to the spin cycle. Here comes Bagsy. He's getting very intimate with that, uh, with that pile of cans right there. The spin cycle sends him out into the tractor barrel. All right, Eddie, here we go. We're, we're narrowing it down. So Dean Newport Hall fights back. But remember, he also had those penalties, penalty, excuse me. So we'll see what kind of gap, no penalties there for the box. All right, so there's, now the pressure's on. The stakes are higher. All right, so what do we got there? Again, we're at, uh, at one minute, just over one minute, and again, just over one minute with three seconds over. It's pretty close. Okay, so we do have our flagger down on the line, and it looks like we are seeing, we're gonna see some penalties here, and uh, let's take a look at this again from the start, Eddie. You see, you see Bagsy there. It was a good effort from him. And again, just uh, just some of that that, that powder, that dust. Uh, we like to call it kitty litter in the racing world. It, kitty it, litter. Yeah, it, 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 pick, <laughs> it, it, it picks up. It's kind of a you know a liquid absorbing compound or, or powder. Like it's, it's a, a detergent, isn't it? It's basically, yeah. it's, it's basically washing powder. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So here we go. Again, our first battle, our head to head, in the top 16. Loser sits to the side and grabs a Monster Energy along with our fans. How you doing? You guys are on television right now. Say hi. There you are. How are we doing? Our fans cheering them on. It's, you know, it, it's a bit brisk. You're seeing a little bit thicker jackets, but it's better than being wet like yesterday. We have great ideal conditions out it's, here today. It's a, it's a perfect day for it. And we've got a sort of a beautiful sunset happening, as you can see from all those lovely orange faces. Yeah, right. Uh, look at this. The Monster Energy double decker. The fans are strewn about. So there it is, 202, 204. So look at that. Bagsy gets the win. He has a smaller time. The, and there it is. Bagsy gets the win, 202, 58 to 204, 58. Bagsy gets the win, that Westlake Monster Energy S13. Yeah, only two seconds in it. And and look at that. That's that's the difference there. You're seeing that a, a small you know deduction or a penalty was, was the difference there. It was only... 0.2 seconds. And there was some nice, nice sportsmanship there, a little handshake going on. It seems like a, it's a real family vibe here. It's a family yeah. atmosphere. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, they, they, want the, they want the bragging rights. They want the cash. I mean, there's cash up for grabs. There's prizes and the honor of going up against the hero cars and hero drivers of Turk and Ken Block. <laughs> but it's nice because it's, like, it's not like a boxing match where they're kind of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where they're, they're doing each other down. They're, they're, they're shaking hands and being friends. Everyone yeah, knows each other. It's a small world, right? They, they, know, they're, they know everybody's seeing them. They're in the public. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> of, of course. And, and yeah, you'll see them obviously grabbing pints and grabbing some monster energy after this. And and, uh, and grabbing a good time because this is just a, a growing sport, and, and there's fans that are that are born every day, adapting. As you said, it's just it's just this culmination of so many different things: nimbleness, the muscularity. I mean, it's it's all of it, right? Yeah, and 
you, you say fans and, and developing and growing worldwide fan base, the audience for this worldwide is millions upon yeah. millions. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. So here we are. We're, we're advancing on. We're seeing the number 14 of Sean Franklin drop into position. And uh, the number 14, excuse me, going against uh, Hadley Fulbrook. So uh, Hadley Fulbrook, that we're getting up close and personal with the R33 of Sean Franklin. And uh, so Sean wait. Franklin's one of the last chance qualifiers, right? Yeah, he was one of the last chance qualifiers as yesterday he, he fought for it and earned it. He got to the top four. We actually took five vehicles because one of the cars was a no-show. So, and then look at this. Hadley Fulbrook, he steps up because of a Monster Energy driver of, of Butsy Butler. He had to retire. So let's fill that spot and get another uh, a young gun, if I may, in into the Jim Connor show. So it's cool. So two two gentlemen that that are kind of you know fighting for it, really trying to make a name for themselves here at Jim Connor Grid. What do you think? Purple or the blue? Hadley's in the blue. He's got the Smurf car, right? Or, or you got the? Well, you got I, I, if if we're just on color, I'm in purple trainers, so I go purple all the way. <laughs> all right, I'm with that. Plus, I'm I'm kind of smiling that the, the purple car is sponsored by a chiropractor, which is something that possibly you would need after something like this. The G-force that these guys pull is quite spectacular. Perfect, right? All right, there's Hadley Brook, Hadley Fulbrook, excuse me. Oh, oh he's just underpowered into that. Yeah, a big mistake there. Might have uh, might have misshifted as he comes around the baller. But you never know, you know, you, you can make a mistake early, but then in this game, you can just get really intimate with those, uh, with those maneuvers and, and catch up. All right, so right now, Franklin out front in that skyline. You can see counter course. And that is, that comes off the factory uh, floor as a 650 horsepower vehicle yeah. out, out of a 2.5 liter engine. So when they modify them, these are these frightening amounts of power. Oh yeah, most definitely. Well, Fulbrook, I, uh, look at this, they're just exchanging blows here as Fulbrook, Hadley, even with that mistake, I, don't, I, I didn't see him hit anything. I mean, you know, you got, we obviously have two eyes, but you can only focus on one thing. So Hadley Fulbrook, even with that mistake kind of bulking, it would be a term around that Corbo seat. He uh, he made up some time there. All right, so uh, as you can see, this is the opposite end of the course. We have fans strewn about Monster Energy VIP Tower. Let's take a look again. So Fulbrook gets the jump out of the drag race. Franklin left in the dust. Yeah, he really did. He was toast on that start. Uh, but then around the Corbo seat, it's almost as if he stalled. Franklin around the tractor tire, brings it on home. And into the end zone sideways. <laughs> <That's> stylish. <laughs> touch, touchdown, American rules football, right? <laughs> yes. OK, so Fulbrook, bit of an advantage if you're just going by time. But penalties will be assessed, and we'll get the results. Here we go. So the second half, so look at that. No penalties. We're seeing 101 and 104. Franklin with 104, that's about just about three seconds behind, and no penalties. Yeah, so Hadley and Sean keeping things very tight. Well done, gentlemen. All right, here we go. Here we go again. All right, Hadley Fulbrook out, out the gates. Quick, nimble. Nice job with S14, that number 12 vehicle. A lot cleaner around that Corbeau, but he does have a wide swing. But is he setting himself proper for the baller? Nice job around the arrowed baller into the gas lane alley. And then shooting all the way back to the double decker checker flag barrel. What do you say, Eddie? Fulbrook, Fulbrook gonna get this thing? He's got an he's got a nimble style, hasn't he? Yeah, he's he's and what's good about his his setup right now, he's not you're not seeing a lot of smoke off his car, and he's not getting completely counter steered out because he's not completely drifting. Yes, the car is being thrown around sideways but he's not just fully throwing it out perpendicular yeah. to the natural racing line. Not seeing any penalties. We might have a clean full pull from both of them, but Fulbrook crosses the finish line first, but it ain't over till this fat guy sings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rich Franklin brings it on in. We see him both hard park and profile. Make some noise if you would at home and here in the building. 59, so we're seeing the sub yes. one minute. We've broken that one minute barrier. That's a sexy time, 59.9 and 105. That's not too shabby. No, not too shabby at all. Let's walk so us through again, Eddie. He really gets out of the trap like, uh, like an excrement off a digging implement. 
<laughs> oh, man. Eddie Temple Morris, everybody. Eddie TM. <laughs> I'm keeping it family. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, so yeah, there it is. Hadley Fulbrook brings it across. I really didn't see anything stand out that would cause for an additional two-second penalty, but we'll see. And there it is. There are the times. No penalties. So that means Hadley Fulbrook is your winner. Hadley Fulbrook in that S14, the Smurf vehicle, the number 12, advances on to the great eight. He advances on to the great eight. While well, Sean Franklin can uh, take solace in the fact that he had zero penalties in two rounds. So uh, well done, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Franklin, uh, I'm looking for, you know, some big things from him in coming years. He, you know, unfortunately, he had a ghost riding with him. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, he had... He had the oh, yes, that's right. He's got his, <laughs> his passenger seat. Is, uh, is, is the screen the movie. A little startled, movie, yeah. little, a little startled <laughs> there. <laughs> Fans of all ages, young and old, guys and gals. Uh, now, who's in the number eight car? Who's this? That is Dimitri Iluk. Dimitri Iluk. So, Dimitri Iluk. So, and where's Dimitri from? from uh, is he from the Ukraine or somewhere he, like that? He is from the Ukraine. And so he's got this weirdly look, castrated looking <laughs> car that looks a bit like a slipper, um, missing the back bumper. And it makes the car look completely skew if but he was looking very good in qualifying. Yeah, Dimitri Iluk, he's, he's a fun driver. This is a dedicated drift vehicle it's a dedicated drift build so you know he was he wasn't 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 exactly the the cleanest or the fastest in qualifying or in seating excuse me uh, as he uh, he finished 13th overall but danny cross danny cross he he seated in fourth position and uh, i'm telling you he is one to watch he was really hot last night he's one of the drivers that came from the lcq yeah and so is that deliberately missing that back bumper or is he just a rubbish parker it's it's it <laughs> that's kind of a, it's a deliberate thing it's a little arrow you're not getting the wind if you have that bumper skin that's going to cause you to catch some wind like a parachute. So, uh, look, there it goes. He, he doesn't have that parachute back there. As there Dimitri shoots off, they go past that that initiation point where it's yep. required for them to drift. Whoa, Dimitri! And he, he didn't shut his door. <laughs> Dimitri, shut the door, man. Uh, Lock it down. Dimitri. So he's multi-skilling, driving, getting extremely into, in, in, intimate with those turns. And that door opening again. Do you think he's just hot? Yeah, right, just airing it out. Oh, and he's got a penalty there. A huge penalty for Dimitri. And I would have to say, and, and, he, and he's got to be suffering right now because when that door opens, I guarantee he's going and grabbing for it, too. Yeah, he must, be, he, he no? must really get your concentration. All right, so Danny Cross there on the other side, the DC Autos UK S14. He's tight around those giant uh, tractor tires. Yeah, he is one to watch, man. I'm telling you, he's going to be a ringer. Nice job, and as, as unfortunately, the Ukrainian driver, Dmitry Iluk, and that Monster Energy S13 eventually brings it in and, and throws wow. open the door. And, and Dimitri is from the uh, Ken Block school of smoke from the rear tire. You know, Ken Block famous for making more, more, more smoke than you'd see in the average Los Angeles race riot. Easy, easy. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, and, and, and unfortunately for Dimitri Iluk, like I said, he's... he's Cards are, cards are kind of stacked against him. This is a purpose-built drift car. Like I said, we saw earlier that of uh, you know the previous driver there, Hadley Fulbrook, and, and he didn't throw his car as sideways as Dimitri is. And here we go. We're watching the guys again, watching Dimitri basically run a race with his car door open. A absolutely stunning. And there he is getting his penalty, just nudging that with the front near side. He's just one turn behind. And here he comes with the door open, showboating with loads of smoke coming off the rear tires. Oh, you gotta love it. So, uh, all right. So let's... just one penalty oh, yeah. for Dimitri. Yeah, he hit that barrel, and that was a hard hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Danny came off clean. Okay, so so Danny... they swapped, and we're going again. All right, here we go. Danny Cross, Dimitri Ilu. Danny, get the jump. Good initiation. See, I'm telling you, Dimitri. I feel like he's getting a little too sideways. He's getting he's getting styly, which is great in drifting, but it, it, it's scrubbing a lot of speed. And with that smoke, that's creating more friction, right? So smoke, create this friction. That's because he's losing grip. So yeah. versus Danny Cross, you're seeing him not as much angle, keeping a little more, you know, in line with the natural racing line. Yep. And less smoke. Yep. He's he's not larging it as much as we exactly say. exactly. All right, so. As Danny Cross, we'll see if he can cross the finish line first. He has zero penalties on his first run. 
Dimitri brings him to the spin cycle. I've noticed that a lot of these cars, especially on the front wheel, have a really serious camber. Why is that? The, 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 the camber, it's, it's setting you up for more angle, and the angle is the biggest thing. You know, they'll, they'll have camber, you know, just to set the car up. You know, they'll get the poke out, they'll get the wheels out. Oh, look at that. Danny Dimitri just loves it. It's like a... It's like a battlefield when he's driving. Oh, look at that. Style and profile. And <laughs> Perfect. They've, they've both come in at exactly the same angle. And there we go. 106.4, I presume, for Dimitri. And one minute dead right there. That's a good time. Yeah, Danny Cross crossed the finish line first. Remember, he has zero penalties. We saw the penalty from Dimitri. Let's take a look at that overhead shot there, Eddie. Almost neck and neck out of the trap. Yep. And there's Danny Cross. Nice, clean. Like I said, look at Dimitri. I mean, if this is if this is a drift competition, you see him yanking the brake there. Might go blind if he keeps doing that. There we go. Danny coming uh, coming in first, coming in sideways. He's a very precise driver, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, bo both these guys had had good execution on the second run. You know, Dimitri, the the door obviously throwing him out of his game. I mean, a door opens on you when you're going down the down the road and look at that Danny Cross Dimitri I look and Danny Cross gets the win less than two minutes of his accumulated time Danny Cross number 58 advances on in to the semifinals well done Danny under two minutes and totally clean nice job Danny Cross As our fans continue to watch like I said fans of all ages see that M claw on the fans young and old yeah, it's nice to see the kids out here too as well. Hello. Got her Santa Pod jacket oi, oi. on. Her, <laughs> Watch her, her. You're enjoying it, are you? And her Ford beanie. Yeah, of course. She sucks. She's, she's seeing the Escort Mark II. She's seeing the Hoonicorn. Oh, man. What do we got here? I'm seeing something get wound up. Yep. There's some serious tire warming going on as the fans look on, wave at the camera, and enjoy the atmosphere today. And so we have lining up. It's a it's a car that looks like it's just going out for a Sunday drive with a top right. down. It's a, it's what we call an MX-5 and what you would call a Miata. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm seeing uh, Rob Woodford going against Richard Dalby Smith. So uh, Richard Dalby Smith and and Richard Dalby Smith again last night in the wet conditions. He seeded number one and he finished number one. He got the overall win. So. He is one to watch, but so is Rob Woodford. We, we opened up the LCQ to five spots. We eventually took six because of uh, Butsy Butler unable to run. But uh, Rob Woodford, he was the final fifth spot yesterday, and then obviously six with uh, Hadley Fulbrook advancing on. So Rob's in the MX-5, right? Rob is in the MX-5, in, yes. in the Miata. So you, you've got to fancy, in, so, in something that's as tight and limited as this, you've got to fancy a maneuverable little rear-wheel drive sports car like that. And so Rob they are neck and neck out of the trap and turning at exactly the same time. Yeah, it's Rob, that's uh, Richard Dolby Smith. Rads, as he's known to his friends. And, uh, and Rad's coming to us uh, from, from Buckinghamshire? From, uh, from Buckinghamshire, yes, that's right. Thank you. Look at this, they're neck and neck coming down the gasoline alley. Now coming See in. The, the handbrake locking the back wheels as he goes into these turns. Uh, Richard Dolby Smith, a bit of a jump as they approach the Samco. You can see it's, it's a zigzag. Those are those are real hairpins. But now when it comes into the spin cycle, that's where they're pirouetting. They're doing a little rock and roll ballet. This is the part of the, of the course that we call the washing machine because they're going around like a spin cycle. And that MX-5 looking like it's enjoying it. Very fluid around the uh, the washing machine section. Uh, but look on the other side in lane yeah. one, Richard Dalby Smith. You see him just there in the background. I'm already done with that, man. I already crossed the finish line. Yes, he parks it comfortably, and Rob Woodford just slides it in. Sub one minute, 59.96, a 59.96 for Richard Dalby Smith on his first run. And Rob and not far behind, 104, not too shabby. He's going to hope to improve on that in the slightly less muscular MX-5. And uh, and. Rob, Rob Woodford, he did throw, throw a turbo at that, uh, at that MX-5, so he's running a little bit of horsepower. I thought he was NA, and obviously you, you, you perk your ears up when you come out of this glass box of emotion, and, and you, you, <laughs> you, hear, you, hear, you hear the turbo spool up. So there it is officially. No penalties were assessed, 104 to 59. 
I have to tell everyone, that, ladies and gentlemen, that Jared Deander is from San Diego. So we're going to get a we're going to get a lot of, of anchor man. We're going to get a lot of anchor man analogies, and that's a good thing. I'm not not even mad. I'm quite impressed. Not, not even mad. Not even mad right now. As Rob Woodford comes around, oh, they're tit for tat right now. No, Rats got the jump. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. Yeah, his, his driving preciseness is really good. I'd like to see him with a little more horsepower and really see how he'd shine. So again, Richard Dolby Smith, Rats, he finished third. He qualified third in seeding. Rob Woodford, he finished 14th. So you got to think there's, there's a few seconds when they're running independently. But right now, it's all about advancing on. Nice the job. Arter, that, that MX-5 again, tight around the... Well, actually, no, he's, he just yeah. loosened up there a little bit. That's the curse of the commentator. But I think he's... Yeah, as we take a look at Woodford, we go on board. Yeah, he pulls and it out. And the MX-5 has done it. Rob, well done, mate. Ah, oh, Woodford. And he, Rob Woodford comes in sideways. He's coming exactly 180 degrees, looking at his competitor. And uh, in at 103, so he did improve his 105 time on the last one. Now we got to take a look at penalties, Eddie. Yeah, you never know, because the fat lady hasn't sung yet, and the fat lady might have some penalties to add to this. Now, remember, Richard Dolby smith at a 59.96, a 104 for Woodford. Woodford did cross the finish line first on this second go-round of this battle. Yeah, look at Richard Dolby smith yeah, that was crazy. So, the, like you were talking about, that that light, nimble car. We see, we're gonna see that later with Marco from Croatia. He has a little Hachi, Hachiroku, which in Japanese it stands for A86 or 86, excuse me, uh, the A86 iconic car. And there it is. There we are. Oh, Clean round for both so Richard look at and that. Rob. So, Richard Dalby Smith. That's a DNF. Okay. That's a did not finish. And so, why did explain to me why did that happen? He might have. Uh, we'll get clarification on that. We'll go to the officials. But I have to assume that he did not go the proper direction on the course, or he made a major mistake and didn't didn't go with the flow and the proper line. We'll get clarification on that. So that means Dolby wow. Smith missed the checkered barrel. So yeah, you could basically get lost on this course. You, if you do the course wrong, then it's a, it's a DNF. You did I, not finish. I mean, I don't know about you. I have a terrible memory. So I would, I would, I would immediately, my mind's like a white erase board. I just forgot who ran. But if doing this course, I, I mean, I would forget where to take the turns. I mean, it's that, you have to think about that because you see the course overhead, but then when you're down on the ground, you're at, you're at eye level with these barrels. Are you going to remember, Eddie? Well, man, I've been, I got lost in a chair before now. So, <laughs> um, and also with all the adrenaline and, uh, and everything, and, the, and probably the energy right. drinks coursing Mo through your veins, most. and, you're, and you're with your door open <laughs> some of the time, uh, you, you obviously your mind can wander and uh, you can get things wrong. It's, you've got to make real snap decisions. Most definitely. So clarification that Rob Woodford advances on at semifinals. Richard Dolby Smith's knocked out, and here's our next battle. Liam Doran coming to us. He's the British bomb in this S13, the number 27. This is his first go-round in Jakarta Grid in a rear-wheel drive car. He competes in the World Rallycross competition. He's going against Croatia's own Marco Palgin, and Marco drove 27 hours to get here and compete. Obviously, uh, Liam Doran, you know, didn't didn't drive as far. So Liam Doran is from Chatham in Kent. So uh, being from Chatham, he's used to a weekend fight. <laughs> oh man! And and knowing knowing Liam, yeah, yeah, he's he's ready anytime. <laughs> That's the name, the British bomb. <laughs> Liam Doran around that black barrel, kind of a slow crawl out of uh, out of the black barrel. Now watch this. This is what I'm talking about. This, oh, Marco's not as tight as he's been previously, but he gets really tight to the tractor trailer tires. Let's see if he can tighten up. Liam, ooh, getting loose. Marco made up so much time earlier throughout the day. See that? See how he wow. caught him up there? Yeah. I, I, there, there was too big of a gap in time from Liam to Marco, but Marco still made up the time. Look at that one minute flat for both of them, but just a, what was that, thousandth of a second? Two very sexy times. The boys will be pleased with that, but looking to improve and break that one minute barrier on the next one. So they swap. All right, let's take a look at this again. So Liam got the jump and we knew that. I mean, you're looking at 165 horsepower Toyota Corolla. And Liam is, uh, he's no slouch. He's got four X Games medal, two of those gold as well. Yes. And, and Liam Doran, he's, he's a fierce competitor. He's been racing in Rallycross. His father's racing in Rallycross. And uh, he, has a, he has a long line of, of go fast, go fast 
blood in his system. Yeah. Let's flip-flop, get him to the other side, lane one, lane two. Oh, Liam Doran does suffer a penalty, so that's a two-second addition to his one-minute flat time after the first run. So Liam is going to be looking to do this one clean to make up. Oh, Marco. He's, he's come straight out of the trap in that lovely emerald green paintwork. Okay, so, yeah, they might... might, might very, he's, he's either he's either come out of the trap faster than anybody else. Yeah. Or, but, but if he's if he's jumped the gun, literally, then uh, he might have a penalty for that. Liam Doran, strong out front, like you said. <laughs> Maybe this is payback. You know, we, we had we had our festivities last night. We had our buggy race. Liam goes to the finals. He goes against Luke Woodham. Luke got the jump, and uh, I would say he almost jumped the light. Liam was up in arms about it, but uh, he was still handed the defeat. As right now, Liam Doran is currently they are so absolutely evenly. yeah. They're look at so oh, Mark, these Marco's going to smoke him here. Watch it. Oh, and Liam. Oh, oh Liam just kisses, it. kisses the giant tractor tires. He's surely going to pick up a penalty for that, and he definitely lost oh, some time. My goodness, Liam Doran potentially tapped the light for certain. He hits the tractor tire, and Marco, look at this. This guy, this guy is awesome. He's a presenter. He, we had a great conversation. I haven't met him prior, and he just he could talk your ear off. He's a really hospitable guy and a really kind gentleman. Again, drove 27 hours. 165 horsepower. He won the uh, the Austrian round of the Fueltopia barrel sprint round, so that qualified him to compete here. So that shows you he ain't no slouch. He's no, no there's no slouches here. So there's surely got to be a steward's inquiry about that uh, about that um, about that. Yeah, there's got to be a steward's inquiry about that initial takeoff. I noticed that uh, drivers often say that they're not they're not driving they're piloting and they're piloting these vehicles because they're i guess closer to rockets than they are to cars so there we are liam jump did he jump the gun we don't know we're gonna have a look so it's when they break the beam is when the time starts just a little clarification there because uh and yeah, that, you see Liam just <laughs> kissing the giant tractor tire, so a that would definitely be a, a little more than a kiss. A little more <laughs> than a kiss. <laughs> that was a little a friendly, a friendly tap. I call them hate taps because nobody loves the love tap. But definitely a penalty. We saw one penalty for Liam, which advanced him two seconds so above Liam, Marco. Liam's amazing start would have been equalized. And look at that, 158, so sub two minutes for Marco Palagin. And Liam Doran gets handed the loss, so Marco advances on as quickly we get on to our next battle. Car number 69, that's Mike Newland. Mike Newland from the South Coast. And then we have... Mike Newland caught a crap straight away. And uh, Dan Firmiger with the... Uh, 1UZ V8, the Nissan V8 under the hood of a Volvo. And I, 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 am I the only one here that's surprised that there's a Volvo here? Ah, uh, two, 200, what did he say, 270 horsepower and throw 100 shot of nitrous at it, 370. So this is, correct me if I'm wrong, the car that spent the most time in the garage here, um, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the most modifications of any car here. This is an incredibly tricked out vehicle. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to call it novelty, but it's interesting. It's 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 different, you know, and, and, and I think it gets style points for that. But what's great is it's competitive. Right now, he's out front. They're both coming so tight in the uh, spin cycles of the uh, of the washing machine section. Section. Look at them, both so intimate with the tires. <laughs> and there must be uh, just a second between them. Let's let's wait for the times. Just over one minute for both of them. They'll be very pleased with that, but looking to improve on the next one. So there's Dan Firminger getting ready in this incredibly modified Volvo. So see, see what I just, I had to, oh, look at that. So 
Both clean as a whistle for Dan no. and Mike. Yeah, but look at that. Oh, That's no. a DNF. A Mike Newland. That, that white box is crucial. I was just going to bring that up. No matter how clean you are, you got to run the right course. It's, right, right. Yeah, you know, course. you, you got you got to tick all the boxes before you can cast your vote. All right, so new, excuse me, uh, Mike Newfound, Newland, excuse me, Mike Newland. Team Jab 69. Now he's currently sitting on a DNF, so we're seeing, a, look at this. We're seeing Rob Woodford, he advances on uh, in, in that Miata, the MX-5. Marco Palagin, you know, these under-horsepowered cars, it just goes to show you, it, it's not all about, it's not all about brawn. Yeah, it's, it's not weightlifting. No. You've got to have that uh, combination between muscularity and precision and, and a lightness of foot. CrossFit. <laughs> See, look how intimate he's getting with those tires. It's incredible. He's... Yeah, nice job by Mike Newland. But remember, he has that DNF. So, I mean, he would essentially need Dan Firmiger to make a critical mistake. So 101 and 59. So two seconds separate him. But Mike Newland sits on that DNF. Eddie, Newland would basically need Dan to have a DNF as well. Right. And then it would default to their first time, and it, yeah, man. So uh, I think I think it's Dan's. Dan's got it in the bag. Dan's surely got this one in the bag. So as we walk through, you're seeing Newland. Nice job for him with his police lights. So tell me, uh, Jared, what is that massive air scoop on the back of that uh, Volvo? It, look, it looks a like lot, a massive air scoop. Yeah, a lot. Of... Okay, so look, Newland again, another. Er... So he was incorrect. Uh, so we... it's combined results. So the DNF kind of just bulks it out because Dan. So Dan Firmiger gets the win, and for clarification, he was incorrect on that Samco urchin, the asterisk, the asteroid. Well, now it just crashed into his planet. Mike Newland's out. But Dan Firmer is in in that Volvo, so that scoop. A lot of the guys run a lot of their cooling essentials on the back of their vehicle. You know, it, it gets gets more gets more lines in the car, more opportunity to cool down, as well as you're getting that flow through the car and through all. You know, keeping it cool, as well as in a lot of drift cars, they'll move those components back because sometimes you'll you'll get you'll hit the front end. All the you know, you got your engine, you got your intercooler, you got all the cooling stuff, and sometimes you want to move that to the back so it's out of harm's way. Right, yeah, also, weight distribution. You got to think about weight distribution oh, as well. Course. If your nose heavy. Yeah. So there's, there's a few different, you know, schools of thought. Next up, here we go. We are seeing that is Smokey. That is Paul Smokey Smith. So you're getting a driver's eye view here. Look you at can this. See how easy it is to get a to get a lapse of concentration and just go round the urchin wrong and end up getting a DNF. All right, so we're riding on the roof. We're holding on for dear life here. I'm Jared Dean. I'm live from the roof of Luke Motors. <laughs> this is like a, one of those, uh, what's, what's, what do they call it, a media drive through Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So uh, Luke Woodham right now, he is our defending Jim Connick, red champion from last year, that Monster Energy S14. You can see Luke getting really, really close to that urchin, and hopefully he went around it the right way. Now let's see how close he gets to uh, to the barrels in this spin section, in the washing machine, machine section, going over the detergent that was put down to uh, combat the oil that was spilled during qualifying. He's keeping things nice and tight. And look and at he's that. in a few seconds ahead of his competitor. So nice run there by Luke Woodham and a different perspective as uh, you can see the, the sun quite a, quite a few hours away from what are we looking at sunset? Do you know, uh, Eddie? Obviously, you, you being a resident here in the UK. Well, I'm confused now because we gained an hour yesterday. Oh, we? yeah, we did. We did gain an hour. And I appreciate that extra hour of sleep this morning. Yes, after the wine that I bought you, I'm sure you did. I appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> wine bottle. It was a wine bottle. I slept extra well. Luke Woodham, I love, I love, we go in the cockpit of Luke Woodham. His eyes are focused. And then, hey. Hello, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Woodham got a smile on his face. That's great. And like you said, the camaraderie among the pits, it's cool. It's a, it's a growing emerging sport. And Luke Woodham has really cut his teeth. And look at that. Luke He's Woodham. cut his time yeah. down. 57.94. Very nice. Luke and Paul, both clean slate on that one both did the course in exactly the way that it should be done and they've swapped and they're going round it in mirrored fashion all right Luke I'm out of the gate 
Oh, Smokey, that's like four obstacles he just hit on his side. He's out of camera. He's obviously on lane one. We're focusing on Woodham right now. But just to let you know, Paul Smokey Smith, that Jaffa Beat S15, he took out a few obstacles. That's going to be a large deduction. And Luke is uh, so, such a consistent driver. He's, he's, isn't he the most consistent driver in Europe this year? Yeah, he's, he's, he's really just created this. You know, it just comes down to seat time. And, and he's really just got a smile on his face. He's learning every day. He surrounds himself with great people, great teams. You know, I, I saw when Bagsy went by and he won. He was over there giving him thumbs up. And a lot of these guys travel all over. Shane Lynch, Bagsy, you know, not only are they on the monster team together, but, but they're friends. So, you know, you, you got to be all ears in an emerging sport like Jim Connor and even drifting. But look at this, Luke Woodham smoking Smokey right now. Unfortunately, Paul Smokey Smith, 2012 BDC champ. It, lo it looks great, but right now you don't want to smoke him. Yep, it's looking like the, the, the more smoke that happens, the, the less speed ha happens. Yeah, because you're losing that traction, you're losing time, you're losing that forward momentum because you're losing grip. Wow, it looks like a battlefield out there. Oh, and so, so 57.8, that's a really nice time. Got to be happy with that. And just an FYI, lay of the land right now, this is our final battle of the 16s. You saw him take out some cones there. Yeah, Luke Woodham, very quick, nicely wrapping around the tractor tire barrel. So, again, we are seeing... <laughs> Did he go around that three times just to cause uh, oh, yeah. some more smoke? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> So there's the, like I told you, those four obstacles Paul Smith hit. Luke Woodham gets the win. Luke Woodham gets the win and advances on to the 19, or excuse me, advances on to the 18. Excuse and, me, and with number a 19. And with, with a cumulative time of 155, that is, a, that is a really sexy time. And we have the quarterfinals next. We're through to the quarterfinals, ladies and gents. All right, so we are. So we have uh, Adam Elder versus Bagsy, and that's our next race, the first of our quarterfinals. I got it. All right, so again, our rear-wheel drive quarterfinal. You can see the lights and have come on on the course now. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's really dramatic. You're going to want to stay tuned, stay here if you're here in person, bundle up, grab a Monster Energy and grab a good time. Again, Jared Dan, <coughs> excuse me, I don't even know my own name. Jared Dean and Eddie, Eddie Temple Morris. Eddie Temple Morris. That, that's your name, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for reminding me, yeah. Jared. <laughs> you, re <laughs> you repeated your name. Yeah, that. that. <laughs> Eddie Temple Morris. I like that. You, you, you've said sexy and intimate. You're making Jim Connor just not, maybe not a little adult family oriented. I'm, I'm just sexing it up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Eddie Temple Morris, Jared Deanna giving you play-by-play. -play. We are now officially in the quarterfinals as Bagsy does it for his poppy, the Westlake Monster Energy S13. As, uh, so, um, as Bagsy from Essex. Bagsy. Bagsy, interestingly, a former Chippendale in, no. a, po in a popular Essex no, night spot. That's, that, some, no? that's, that's somebody... somebody uh, is that somebody winding somebody, me up? Yeah, winding you up. So. Okay, well, he definitely won the King's <laughs> European Championship in 2014 oh, and the 2010 laughing. British Drift All Champion. All right, let's talk about it, because Adam Elder, he's making his debut here in head-to-head -head competition because he had a bye because of Sean Lynch had to retire from competition. But right now, Bagsy has the jump on Elder, a.k.a. the Terminator. He is our reigning 2015 Fueltopia Barrel Sprint Champion. He also won the FBS qualifying round to qualify for a grid, so he was preceded. He didn't need to go to LCQ. He qualified and, and he finished, excuse me, he finished overall uh, number one. So here we go, Elder. Here goes Bagsy into the spin cycle. Oh man, look at him. Look at him trying to keep on both cars. We can see both yeah. cars. You're watching Adam yeah. Elder, the Terminator. Yes, in the Terminator car. Is that because every time he crashes, he just comes straight back? <laughs> yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> and there goes Elder. Brings it in before Bagsy. Let's see if any penalties were assessed. What do you, what do you make of that run? I mean, we, we, we were, oh, look at that, two seconds. Two seconds in it, even less than two seconds. And uh, at 58.61, you've got to be happy with that time, breaking that magic one-minute barrier.
And right now, Bagsy's hoping that Elder had a mistake, potentially hit an obstacle, getting a two-second penalty. Bagsy had the jump, but when push came to shove, Elder pushed his car around but just a tad cleaner. Two seconds cleaner, let's, let's add that. Yeah, Elder very clean. But let's see if there's something we just didn't catch here on this Gymkhana grid European gauntlet course. No. So there it is, a two-second gap. Can Bagsy make it up? He needs to get the jump and continue to keep it clean. Yeah, let's keep it clean, boys, for the second run. Such a lovely paint job on that Terminator car. Yeah, definitely is a... Adam Elder, like I said, got a bye here into the quarterfinals because Shane Lynch's Jaspi 370Z was unable to compete. Wow, Elder really throwing it out. A lot of smoke. Bagsy tighter. Not as quick. So compromising some angle. To be potentially a little faster. Both of them mirroring. Look at that, that overhead shot. You're seeing Bagsy. A tinge out front. Yeah. Bags is keeping it just a little bit tighter. You see him initiating that handbrake turn around there. And another one. It's like a figure of eight section of the course right there. Very complicated figure of eight. Yeah, zigzagging through the course into the spin cycle. Remember, Bagsy needs two seconds and he needs to keep it clean. Is Elder going to take out Bagsy? Here we go, the home stretch. One more turn and burn for Elder and Bagsy. Elder gets across the finish line. Any penalties assessed as Bagsy safe at home. Oh, man, look at that. Two very good times, 59.6. Got to be happy with that one. So that's a three-second gap, given that if there are no penalties, we'll see where that lands, where uh, who's going to advance on. Is it Elder or Bagsy? I didn't Bagsy. see any penalties no. in that, but we'll see now. No, I did not see any penalties. Yeah, lane one looking quicker from the start. And around that tractor tire barrel. Eddie, I think we yeah. got a I think we got a clean battle. Yeah, and the monster the, the monster car keeping it just a little bit tighter around the tractor tires. Well that's what he needed to do, but look at this. I'm seeing Bagsy light up his tires, and that might be his swan song. Let's make it official, and there it is. Adam Elder gets the victory, but a celebratory or a, <laughs> a defeated burnout as he exits stage left. A commisatory burnout. A com there you Did go. Did I just invent a word? A commisatory burnout. <laughs> <laughs> Those are tears. Those are tears. Too soon, Eddie. Oh, Too we can, soon. We can smell the smoke in the commentary box. <laughs> it's great. What a great atmosphere. Like a battlefield now. Hanging out with Wiz Khalifa right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so we're advancing on. So one driver already in the semifinals, the Terminator. He'll be back in the semifinals, Adam Elder. Now, so Pat we have Hadley Fulbrook versus Danny Cross in the next quarterfinal. Yep. And that is our next race, ladies and gents. This should be a good match because you, you look at the vehicles. This is a very po you know very popular chassis in the drifting world and quickly becoming a popular chassis in the Gymkhana and barrel sprint world. You look at Luke Woodham, he has an S14. He's our reigning Gymkhana grid champion. And look at these guys, both in the same chassis. Again, uh, Cross and Fulbrook. And Cross was one to watch last night, but uh, but Hadley, if you if you look at him, he just took out uh, Sean Franklin, who uh, you know he's nothing to bat an eye at as well. It's nice to see two uh, cars that are almost the same, because then you just think, well, it's down to the driver, isn't it? Because the, the, the playing field is level. That's what you think, but of course, there's so much trickery under that bonnet. Yeah. You never know, one might have the edge. Well, Danny Cross uh, had some unfortunate fate. He, he popped his engine, he blew up his engine about a week ago, so he has a borrowed engine in his vehicle right now. Well, they, so, were, they were yeah. certainly uh, almost identical out of the trap and into the first corner. Across. They are mirroring each other exactly so far. There's hardly anything in it. Yeah. Cross, just a slight edge. Cross has got a, a, a microsecond ahead. Can, can he cross it? Here we go as Fulbrook into the Samco. So Cross still just gaining more ground as they continue through the course.
bringing him on through. Look at this cross, Eddie. It's, you think Danny's a, he's just a fraction ahead, but just in this last section, if you can get closer and tighter into those, uh, into those tractor tires, you can catch up. We've yeah. seen that in qualifying. Didn't work that time, but still very, very close. Let's see how close they were, and let's see if there were any penalties. Jeez. Both under a minute. That's a very sexy time. They've both got to be extremely pleased with breaking the one-minute barrier. Let's swap them around and let's have some deja vu now. All right, walking us through here, you see Danny Cross, then Fulbrook. Like I said, not, not going for the full drift. They're kind of gripping. You know, they go around through that zigzag, the center course. They're, they're just whipping around and trying to get as much traction as possible to slingshot around those barrels. You, yeah. start, you start with the checkered flag barrel, you go around the Samco urchin, and then you go around the single black barrel into the spin cycle. And both Hadley and Danny keeping it clean, and that's not what they're going to want to do again. So now not look at such this. an even start this time. So Fulbrook gets the jump. Danny Cross out of the Corvo seat, mirroring each other, taking a look at both cars. But as we are taking a look at Fulbrook, Hadley still just nudging. He's just nudged ahead, but Danny Cross, I think he's catching up a little. All right, so Fulbrook, yeah, looks like Cross is. Danny was kept it very tight around the uh, the urchin. Oh man, it's gonna come down to the wire. One second separates them after that first run. Here comes Cross and Fulbrook. Fulbrook enters the tractor tire barrel before Cross. Can he gain some time? Oh, Doctor, look at this. Fulbrook brings it on in. So if that's clean, Fulbrook's gonna get it. Or no, man. This, oh and my they, goodness. And they've both no, broken the minute it's, barrier. It's going to be fractions of a second. As Danny Cross had that 58, Hadley Fulbrook 59. Neither my maths nor my memory are good enough to, uh, to sort out who's going to win no. this one. It's going to go down to the stewards' inquiry. So take a look at this. Like I said, they were, they were ripping around the spin cycle. And then when they came into the tire barrel, that's where Danny gained some ground. An exciting battle. The two. Two cars that, that, have, that are running the same chassis, and they really were neck and yeah. neck through almost the entire course. And, and both and both sub one minute, which is great. Yeah. So whichever one of these fine drivers, pilots, loses this, they're still going to take solace in the fact that they had both gone under one minute and both times and both clean on both on both. And so Danny Cross has won that one. Well done, Danny. Just by less than a second. Yeah, Danny Cross, less than a second, gets the victory. Danny Cross gets the victory and advances on into the semifinals. So we have a we have a shake to the semifinal now. Well, we have two we have two yep. winners we have two winners in there, and now we have two more battles in the quarterfinal. Because we worked it down from 16 to 8. We're trying to work towards 4. Already in, Adam Elder and Danny Cross. <laughs> Marco, Marco cracks me up, this guy. He, he gets out of the car, throws his driving cap on. Marco, wave to the crowd. Marco, they can hear you. No? Okay. <laughs> like he, I, I feel like he, he, next time I see him, he's going to bring me gifts. He, he's that kind of guy. Yes, the MX-5 really fast out of the trap on that one. And you've got to expect a car like that to be really tight around the corner. So let's see if Marco can catch him up. All right, so Rob Woodford, Marco Palajan from Croatia. This is a great battle. So you're not seeing a Nissan. You're seeing a Hachiroku Toyota Corolla. This is like autocross in the States. Do you know what autocross is? Do you have autocross here? Uh, yeah, we do, yeah. OK, it's like car parks, the line of the cones. These are two very popular autocross cars, but they're 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 Getting the back end out, they're obviously rear wheel drive. We're in the rear wheel drive class, so it just goes to show you: run what you brung. Jim Connor just it, it just it opens up the doors for so many different platforms, so many different chassis. Nice execution around is Woodford and Marco. Look at Marco. Yeah, Marco really Ooh. caught up in that one because. Uh Rob was ahead of him at the start, but yep. Marco absolutely had a brilliant round there. As we take a look at Woodford and Marco on the finish line. Rob Woodford definitely 
Raising some eyebrows out here. So Marco, I'm presuming, got a little bit more horsepower in that uh, No, I, I would say he has less. Really? I would say he has less horsepower. That's why you see Woodford get the jump. He's got the tur turbo. Woodford in the Mazda MX-5. He has a little more horsepower. He's got turbo. This is a naturally aspirated uh, oh, really? 4AG. Yeah. Oh, I it's, thought it's, that that was more tricked out than no, that. No, that's six, 16 valve, naturally aspirated uh, Toyota Corolla. Just, just, so, uh, it's sounds just a, like a minicab car. It's, it's adorable. It's just call what it <laughs> that's, is. That, that's the kind of car you take your kids to school in. Yeah, I mean, fast and quick and wrapping around some poles. 102 to 56, Rob Woodford. So Marco, man, that's that's a big gap there. Marco with a sexy time. Yeah, under 57 seconds and both clean. So Marco and Rob out again. Rob always quicker out of the trap, but. What we saw last time was Marco just got into it and ended up a few seconds ahead of Rob. So let's see what happens this time. Like, so take a look at Marco's technique. He's not doing a lot of drifting. Look at look at his actual bobblehead helmet. He's bouncing around in there. That means he's losing some traction. He's hopping around the track. So he's not drifting as much. He's gripping a lot more around the track versus drifting. That might be a key strategy as, a, oh, wow, Woodford, a wide swing around that checkered flag barrel. Yeah, he's got to have lost a, a half a second on Marco there. Marco Palagin coming into the spin cycle, and there, that's when you need to spin it around. When he goes into the hairpins, he just flicks it, whips it around, and slingshots out. Yeah, and Marco has, again, caught up with Rob up to the spin cycle section, and he's going to pull out of his two turns and come into the end zone. The Croatian crusher brings in the Corolla and takes out Rob Woodford. Unbelievable oh. technique. Oh, Jared, the king of alliteration. That was absolutely <laughs> masterful. <laughs> Unbelievable there from, again, Marco Polizian and Rob Woodford. Again, some, some under-horsepowered cars by comparison to the rest so of the field. This is the, it's, it's the hair of the tortoise, isn't it? Marco just bides his time. It, Rob is always out of the trap faster. But by the time they get to the spin cycle section, Marco's caught up. See, he's just gone into that a little ahead of Rob in the naturally aspirated Toyota. Yeah, such such a great execution. Like I said, technique, that, uh, that might strike, you know, that might catch some people's interest. And they're like, wait, I don't need to just completely drift around these obstacles outside of, you know, outside of that mandatory drift as so Marco does suffer a penalty, but he still gets the win because of the big gap. Yep. So Marco Pelagin from Croatia grabs a victory over Rob Woodford. Marco yep. is now in the semifinals. Silky skills from the Croatian crusher there. Dude, Marco, an absolute terror out here in that Hachiroku. All right, this should be a good one. Luke Woodham, our defending Jim Connor grid champion, Going against Dan Fermagere. So Luke continuing the jovial Woodham style. As uh, that is not Dan Fermagere, that is Luke Woodham. We're inside the cockpit. Hey, all right, Luke. <laughs> but focus, yes. focus, double thumbs, thumbs up. up. Thumbs up from Luke, he's stoked. He's, he's the defending champion. He's up against the, uh, look that heavily cambered Volvo there. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta love it. It's uh, a lot of fun seeing just uh, the variety of vehicles, but Luke Woodham, does he have what it takes to beat uh, that 370, 350 horsepower, I believe it was exactly? Well, he, well, he's certainly got a positive mental attitude and that's got to help. Yeah, all right, so here we go. Dan Fermagere and Luke Woodham, the final battle of the semifinals. Again, the final battle of the semifinals as we will see the rear-wheel drive finals continue after this, or we'll see the, yeah, we'll see the finals. So we'll, we won't stop until we see who wins. And of course, we're getting the cockpit view from Luke Woodham's car, seeing him take that first corner. It's so exciting riding with him, seeing how close he gets to the giant chair and seeing him get very tight into the giant toilet roll or whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Eddie, killing me. <laughs> All right, so we're seeing Dan bring it around, and there's Luke Woodham, a little bit of a hesitation there, out of the checkered flag, double stack barrel, out of the Samco Asteroid, as we are riding once again on the roof of Luke Woodham. 
and you can see, especially in this light, you can see how confusing it could be. Right. Spinning around, and you can, with some of the DNFs, the, the did not finishes that we have, you can see from, from the cockpit view how easy it is to get lost, even in a, in a little car park like this. Yeah, Wood, I'm putting it down right now. So Adam Elder. Oh, the Volvo looks like he's having another is he, is another he, tire issue. That back left, he called that competition timeout earlier in today's festivities, and uh, I, don't, yep. I don't know if he has another competition timeout. Yep, you can see that you've got a uh, you've got a punctured near side rear tire, and he did that in the uh, in the qualifying round. So I think it was the same tire. Yeah, it was that back left corner. So it's interesting that they're running quite low tire pressures you can see to get more grip and that might be having an effect on on what's going on here so what happens does he get to uh, does he get a timeout and get to put a new tire on all right so dan firmacher with a 50 no that that uh so we've just we've just heard that you get one timeout for each stage of the competition Okay, so, so presumably uh, for this next stage of the competition, he's got a timeout, so he's going to go and get a new tire. All right, so, uh, so nice. all is well and good. All right, so Luke Woodham waits. Let's see what moment for Dan and his Volvo. You see it? Looks like he's rotating around. Is it at this point? Yeah. Look at that. My God, he's running on the. It's, it's like a, it's a. It's a ghost tire. Like a, yeah, that, that is an X tire. It's running like a like a train. So an invisible tire there. The Nanking. Tires popping off. And he's still managing to control that car, even on three wheels. Three wheel motion. Ice Cube making a little cameo. That is some skill right there. Yeah, nice job by Dan. Unfortunately, you know, he, he obviously had the slower time. That's you, you, You're going to need all four tires. <laughs> yes, that would run. help. Yeah, that's it's kind of hypercritical. But Luke Woodham, you know, we, we failed to kind of acknowledge Luke Woodham, a sub, a sub one minute time, a 58 from Woodham and the Monster Energy Jab Speed S14. Now, remember, Eddie, this is our final battle of the quarterfinals and forging our semifinals. So, already in, Adam Elder will go against Danny Cross, and Marco will go against the winner of this head-to-head -head battle. All right. Taking a look. So taking a look at, again, our, our time schedule. We have an action-packed day here. So Luke Woman would have just uh, waving to the crowd. He really enjoys his work. Isn't it great when you do a job that you really, really love? All right, so we're up here waiting for our next action. Let's throw it down to our girl on the ground, Kiri, who's with the famous Nick Hamilton. That's right, I am down on the ground with the famous Nick Hamilton. Now the weather is a little chilly outside, so Nick's taking a bit of solace inside. Now it's been an incredible day, hasn't it, Nick? Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's been a fantastic event. <clears throat> really, uh, really proud to be a part of it. You know, it's um, <clears throat> something completely different for me, uh, completely new, um, and it's something that really keeps you uh, on top of your game in terms <laughs> of a driver, uh, you know, learning how to, to drive these things um, against so many uh, talented athletes so it's fantastic to be here really happy to uh, to be a part of it now enjoying your touring car season but we did just see you out in one of the buggies what do they like to drive yeah it's a completely different discipline to me obviously uh, i'm used to a btcc car which is front wheel drive um, and now i'm driving a, an rx uh, rallycross car which uh, is rear wheel drive and not modified either so it's quite difficult for me to uh, to get my handle on it um, but yeah no it's good it's, it's what keeps you sharp and hopefully makes you a better all-round all-round driver you know driving this circuit at Jim Connor it really helps um, you know learning how to control the car sideways and try and get some donuts out of it um, but yeah no really enjoying it <laughs> I bet you did by the smile on your face thanks so much for talking yeah, no, to us no worries thanks so there is Kiri trackside with Nick Hamilton while we wait for uh, I think it was Danny F to get a new near side rear tire on his Volvo and I think he has done that and we are going again here we go Mirror so the fashion. second half second half of this battle Luke Woodham in lane one now we're riding in the cockpit 
We are seeing his handiwork here. Let's see how he grabs the awesome handle. There it is. Oh, yes, the awesome handle, or the wand, as we <laughs> call it in, uh, in the UK in the UK drift circles. Good Going around the corner on the wand. My friend Toby Moody calls it the fever lever. <laughs> the fever lever. <laughs> well, you can see they're on mirrored tracks, and they mirrored each other exactly. It was like a, a raw shash ink blot test or something. <laughs> a nice well put. <laughs> what does it look like? What, what, kind of emotions does, what kind of emotions do you feel what, when you what, look what at this? What are you feeling now? What are you feeling, Jared? <laughs> I see a lion. <laughs> and the lion is Luke Woodham right now. So Dan trying to fight back. Oh, both so tight around the cans. And remember, Dan did finish, but he did have a penalty, and he had quite a big gap. So he's going to need to finish before Luke Woodham, and yep. that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. Luke Woodham Luke. shuts the door on Dan. And that, that ever so you need, oh wow, he's backing it in now. Well, he just, he, he had to, didn't he? he knew, I think he knew he'd lost, so he's just gonna large it at the end. We were talking about that Back to the Future reference and the Mr. Fusion intake there on the back. That's what he was doing. Where are we going? We don't need roads. He skipped the tire because he was gonna catch air. Yep, he's just showing off his <laughs> flux capacitor that he's got on the back of that thing. Right, exactly. So, Luke Woodham, a smiley boy, um, being overlooked by, uh, Hello, Hi, the Monster Girls there. Hello. Hello, ladies, as uh, they're staying warm up on top of the Monster Energy Tower. They're cheering on Luke Woodham. Do you think Luke Woodham won, ladies? Did he get the win? Well, Say hello. So, so there's there Luke Woodham out Luke of the gate. Luke really fast out of the trap, yanking on that wand there, showing us his silky skills. And yeah, Dan unfortunately loses that tire, maybe loses some momentum from that. I mean, not just physically, but mentally and preparing to go against our defending Jim Conagrid champion. And it looks like that will potentially be a wrap for him. <laughs> All right, here and again, you get some nice sportsmanship here. And here comes the result. Let's see what happened. Both clean and Luke Woodham goes through 156-66. Dan at 208. So we now have a full shape to our semi-finals. Jared, do you want to take us through them? Most definitely, I'd love to. Our four drivers in the semi-finals, Adam Elder versus Danny Cross. And then the Croatian Crusher, 27-hour drive. And here he is, under 200 horsepower, Toyota Hachiroku, Marco Palagin from Croatia, goes against our defending Gymkhana Grid champion of Luke Woodham. Man. I mean, if, if you would have seen all the drivers list, I, I, I probably would have said Luke Woodham, but Cross and Elder, Elder obviously defending champion. This should be fun, but I got to say, Cross, he's a Terminator. His eyes are on the prize. He came from the future to defeat everybody here. <laughs> yeah, and I think, have we got the Terminator running now? Is that the... Yeah, this is the Terminator. That is Adam Elder there on the right, and Danny Cross in the orange S14. Now it's another S14. Look at this. Like I told you, there's three S14 chassis in the semifinals. What does that tell you? It's well, that it's a damn it's, good it's, car. It's, yeah. a, it's a dang good car. All right, so Danny Cross, little shiny monkey, winking a gun. The DC Autos at UK. Does he keep the the uh, bonnet open to keep it cool? Uh, yeah, cool and it, yeah. Semi-final it, it's, one. It's, it's usually it's usually because cool. All right, semi-final one. Danny Cross, Adam, Adam Elder. Elder. Here we go. And they are neck and neck out of the trap with the Terminator car maybe just a fraction of a second ahead into the first turn. Nice job by Elder as we're seeing. Danny Cross dance with the devil with that Corbeau seat. Getting a bit close. And Danny has been so consistent today through qualifying and through all of these uh, all of these stages. Can Elder get taken down? Oh, and I think Danny had a little he caught, he, a caught a crab there, so he's going to be a, a second at least behind now. Oh wow, Elder! Look at that. He's having some issues there. So Elder, way back, cross already in the spin cycle. Elder just wrapping around and finishing the zigzag. Nice job into the washing machine. Count of one, two, as they go around the 720. What do you say, Eddie? Is Danny Cross going to take down the Terminator? Yeah, the Terminator looks, uh, well, surprisingly fallible and unrobotic. He's, he's proved himself human. The Terminator has proved himself human. He is. And coming at 103 um, behind uh, Danny Cross's 
59 seconds, 59.7. So he's crossed the magic minute. He's got to be pleased with that. But Adam is going to be kicking himself for catching a crab, and he's going to be uh, hoping to improve on the next one, and he surely can. And you saw, you saw Elder fast out of the gate, but uh, the, it, was, it was the checkered flag barrel that gave him a bit of problems. That's where he scrubbed a lot of speed, came across. He already parked it. He's been, he, already, uh, he already grabbed a drink by the time Adam Elder finally got across that finish line. So, so we've got a, we've yeah, got a DNF for, for poor Adam. Yeah, that's what I said. I, I figured as much. I was, I was focusing on Danny Cross when I, I looked over and saw Elder. It looked like he doubled back. He missed the checkered barrel. So Elder missed the checkered barrel. He thought if he went around it at minimum. So right now, Elder sitting on a DNF. Danny Cross sitting pretty. As long as he kind of navigates so, this course, you have to think that, uh, that Cross is going to advance. Adam Elder is going to be hoping and praying that Danny touches something or gets something wrong just to equalize this. Yeah, he basically needs a DNF in order for Elder to move on. Remember, the winner goes to the finals, and then uh, and the winner of the semifinals goes to the final, and then the, the, the we have a consolation bracket for the... Oh, and he's clipped another one to the oh, Terminator. So Oh, the, no, you know what? I take that back. I saw Cross hit a cone, but it seemed that Elder knocked it over into his course, so I don't think Cross will be penalized. So no, great surely effort. Not. That would be that would be an act of God. No, an act of uh, <laughs> improper. An, an act of Adam Elder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Elder. So Danny Cross. Is, it looks like he's got this in the bag. If he could just, uh, if he could just not hit anything and find his way to the end zone. And Elder brings it across, but I'm seeing one, two, three, three for sure. Four. I'm seeing. Yeah, four potential cones that have been knocked over. So, uh, yes, Elder does finish first with a 58.2, but I'm going to see two, four, six, eight seconds added to that. Yeah, the Terminator crossed the line in a sexy time, but the Terminator took out some cones on the way. But he'll be back. Yeah, of course he will. <laughs> in, in the Constellation Battle for third. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are enjoying this at home and here in the building, Santa Pod Raceway. We are live as so there it is. Adam again with a DNF. He's going to be gutted about that. Danny on a cumulative time of two minutes. And we go back trackside to Kiri, who was just with Nick Hamilton. And she's with our last winner. That's right, Danny Cross through to the final. Congratulations, two clean runs. Thank you so much. I am over the moon. It's, oh, I'm just so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> now going into the final, can you keep two clean laps? Yeah, no, <laughs> no problems there. I keep the clean laps, just wherever the car will hold up. It's been brilliant all weekend. So we've had such great support out here from everybody as well. It's been fantastic. So really looking forward to the finals now. Come on. <laughs> Good luck, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Right on. Thank you so much, Kerry, and congratulations, Danny Cross, going to the finals. Like, like we said, you need two clean laps because, you know, if you come in here and you knock anything over, that two seconds can quickly get you the loss. Yeah, really. It, it, it helps to keep things clean. You know, you can, you can perhaps, perhaps it's wiser to just not large it so much and just keep it clean and, and hope that your competitor is going to make a mistake. Something about there's a UK term about beans. Don't give it all the beans. Don't give it all the beans. Or here's another one for you. Welly. Beans okay. equals welly. Okay. So James was talking earlier in the uh, commentary this afternoon about giving it some beans. You can, you can also say giving it some welly, which I think comes right. from a Wellington boot. Okay. Throwing a Wellington boot, possibly. Give it, give it some welly. I like that. All right. So Danny Cross, he is in the finals. Who's he going against? Is it going to be the Croatian crusher, Marco Palagin or Luke Woodham? And he's continued. This has got to be a good luck charm. Oh, well, that's Luke, new. Luke that's Happy new. Woodham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, Luke. Uh, there's a snake in my boots. There's a Croatian crusher, and he's, he's the nicest. He's the Croatian kindest crusher. Yes. He, it's, it's he, the cr he kills you with a smile. <laughs> the crusher versus Mr. Happy. Yeah, exactly. Well, both of them are just jovial fellows. So here we go. Marco versus Luke Woodham. Marco there on the right in this signature Hachiroku from Croatia. Luke Woodham out of the gate. So oh, Luke has absolutely slaughtered the Croatian crusher out of the gate. He was a couple of seconds ahead. But you got to remember that the, the time starts when the line is broken, the, uh, the the digital line. It's not all about the stars. You can yeah. go. But uh, so 
It's, it's all about the clock. We've seen this happen again and again, where somebody comes out of the trap really fast, but then the guy that's behind just focuses, and Marco, gets into it, and wins. And Marco's that kind of guy. Yep. We've seen Marco gain a lot of ground when it comes to the double spin cycle. You see the double barrel, and uh, he comes out of this like a shotgun. Let's see. But Luke has gone into the spin cycle slightly ahead. Yep. The Croatian crusher has caught up a little in that naturally aspirated. Is that a Toyota? Yes, yeah. it is. The Hachiroku coming on. See, look at how much ground oh, he gained. So, yeah, so tight around that giant tractor tire. Remember, Luke got the jump, but it's when you break the, the line, you know, the, 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 meta, the, the kind of the laser beam, when you break the traction beam, the traction yep. beam, the tract tractor beam, I, they're sucking them <laughs> in. So, uh, I think yeah. you're still in Terminator I world. Know, right? I, I, sorry, I'm, all my pop culture <laughs> stuff is getting, getting mixed up here. 60% of the time, you work every time. 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Uh, so there is the Croatian crusher lining up. As Andy Lapuka and all the fans look on, there it is. 50, see, look at so that. Look at that. 0 0.02 seconds separate them. Wow. 0.02. I told you, Marco, the Croatian crusher, fights back because what about that gap? Is Marco going to take out our defending Gymkhana grid champion? Yep, the champion has got somebody hot on his tails. Ooh. The champion is being worried by the Croatian crusher. Let's see if he can keep his focus and hold it down and keep the Croatian at bay. Uh, love it, and here love we go. It. So he's he's out of the trap fast again. But as we've seen, it's it, that's not an indication of who's going to win. When we get that, getting that exciting cockpit view from our former champion, yanking on that wand, jerking the steering wheel, making it look so easy, Jared. As Luke Woodham comes through the gasoline alley, look at Marco's going to gain some ground. Will he? All right, so Woodham looks like he is a little quicker out of the checkered flag barrel. 0 0.02 seconds separate him. You don't want to see a penalty. This is when you don't want to mess up. One of the tightest battles we've seen so far. The winner goes to the finals and goes against Danny Cross. Who's it going to be? The loser goes against that of Adam Elder. As Here we, we go, go into the man. into the tires and that nasty. Come on, make some noise, Santa Potter at home. Oh. Ah, and Luke brings it home. We can fractionally run. head of the but Croatian But hold on, Crusher hold on. 58 and 57, lane one. 58 That's 57, a, but yeah. are there any penalties? Because it ain't over until the fat lady is sung. And when the fat lady sings, it's usually she's usually singing about penalties. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this again. So it's, it's when, that, when that laser beam line is broken, that's when timing starts. Uh-huh. So Woodham working the wheel. Nice job. Around that checkered flag course. I didn't see any penalties. I didn't see any penalties. <laughs> All right, there's our fan. Bagsy, sorry, buddy. There's Ryan Turk. He's waiting in the wing. Still, look, grab a monster, buddy. Grab a good time. <laughs> Is that Butsy back there as well? Ryan Turk, he's waiting in the wings because uh, he's going to do battle against the yes, winner. So he's, absolutely. he's looking at the competition. Look at this. So both of the boys have kept it clean. And that being the case, Luke Woodham has gone in by a fraction. No. Less. 150. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. by less than a second. There you go. Luke Woodham has taken it. So the Croatian crusher has been uh, crushed by Luke Woodham, who is with our very own Kiri at trackside right now. Here's Luke and Kiri. Luke Woodham, defending champion in the final against Danny Cross. That was close, less than a second between you. Oh, it was awesome. It was <laughs> awesome. I really enjoyed that. I mean, this event's amazing. This is what makes it so good. When you're, next, you're neck and neck and you're looking over the other lane and you're thinking, oh, you know, if he makes a mistake, you know, and, you know, so on and so forth. But we were neck and neck and, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. So fair play to everyone coming out here. It is amazing to be here in front of a big crowd. Um, yeah, and we can hear you cheering inside the car, so let's hear some cheers. Defending champion, can you take it in the final? I am, I am, yeah, I want to, I want to. <laughs> You've got it, he's determined. <laughs> Kiri with Luke Woodham, last year's champion, 
And this year's finalist. He's, he, you've got to fancy him as a as a as a favorite. Yeah, he's a favorite. He. I mean, what's what's great about him is you see the smile. I mean, all the guys have a smile on their face. But Woodham wants it. He's driven. He's motivated. You you follow him on Instagram. And a lot of these drivers, they you know, they they're the final set. The final set, he's stoked. He's going to be on the podium. He's going to grab one of these awesome... Do you see the trophies? Did you see them? The trophies look like something that would be given in a, a, a some kind of heavy metal competition. I would expect this this trophy <laughs> to be picked up by at least Iron Maiden. Yeah, or or it's a prop from 300, the movie. So... <laughs> ah, on the subject of Iron Maiden, what are these girls dancing to? DJ, DJ P. Soup dropping some beats over there. <laughs> I think they're just so, trying to stay a, little, a bit warm because obviously I, I got a flannel, I got jeans, I got thermals on. They're in uh, hardly anything. <laughs> Monster girls, yeah, well, we can't see the goosebumps from here. Right, they're looking right. fine. All right. <laughs> got, got, and Shane Lynch, the other monster okay, girl so the, up there. The girls are getting warmed up for the all wheel drive quarterfinals that we've got coming up next. So, just to, uh, as a reminder, we had, we've just had rear wheel drive. Yep. All right, so yeah, the rear wheel drive now onto the all wheel drive action. This is the top eight, the top eight. And it looks like we are seeing uh, up, up here on deck. We're seeing that of, uh, looks like Dimitri. That is Dimitri Shribny and James Stefan. The team one three, the team thirteen forty, the car number thirty five. So Dmitry Shrivny, he's the guy to beat. He was a uh, he, he won last year. He is he's uh, originally from Ukraine. Now he's living here in the UK, and uh, he's the he's the UK winner and also the Fueltopia Barrel Sprint two thousand fifteen champion. So definitely no slouch. Now we might as well change the uh, surely change all-wheel drive to just battle of the Subarus because that's intent to all intents and purposes that's what it is now right isn't it? Up, up until they have to go against uh, the Hunicorn of Ken Block so. yes of course and that it. incredible nine modified 1965 unique one-of-a-kind Hunicorn a 1965 Mustang that you would normally expect to be in black and tan livery just <laughs> chugging down the highway towards right. Tijuana right <laughs> or 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 it would be uh, obviously the signature green it's in the movie bullet right as, a, yeah. as it's something something like that well he changed things up quite a bit and uh, as uh, we are getting set here again Dimitri Shrimney James Stephen Stephen excuse me all right here we go Dimitri the guy to beat so Dimitri's in the SCR. Luminescent orange Subaru. I oh, know the other. That's the other one. This is uh, this is Jane Stefan in the in the luminescent orange car, in the 35 car. Yep, the high vis vehicle right now, wide around that barrel alley. Oh, pulling the handbrake into that turn. Now watch how these these cars navigate around, especially the spin cycle. They're all-wheel drive, so that means obviously all the wheels are spinning. They all have power versus our last class. Only the rear wheels have power, so definitely different around the spin cycle. Oh, Dimitri, a wide swing. Very uncharacteristic from Dimitri, but maybe setting himself up here. He's still... See, look at Dimitri having a tough time rotate. Yeah, he's kind of... It's like almost he's lost his concentration going into the spin cycle. Or he's lost some power. He's... He, you know, I asked him because I was, you know, saw him in Madrid last year. I've seen him here at Santa Pod, and I said, hey, man, what did you change? Anything? He says, bigger tires. He just wanted bigger tires. But so, Dimitri in underneath the one-minute barrier, 59.7 seconds. And James Stefan just outside the minute. Let's see what's happening as regards penalties. We think they've gone through clean, but we never know. Let's see. As Shane Lynch and the Monster Girls continue to party, these guys are partying on track. James Stefan in that bright orange high viz. And like I said, a very uncharacteristic Dimitri Shrivny having some difficulty navigating the track. Leaving a window of opportunity for James to fight back as he is only separated by just about three seconds. But Dimitri, even with that loss of power or loss of concentration, in a, at least a second, ahead of James. So they've swapped around, they've kept it clean on the last one. Dimitri in first underneath a minute. Right. And he's going to be looking to break that minute barrier again. James is going to be looking to definitely break that barrier to beat Dimitri. And they are neck and neck as they go into the first corner. James, Dimitri. Dimitri in lane one. 
to I'm, not, I'm not really seeing any large advantage to either lane. I, I, I mean, they're, they're obviously mirrored courses, but I'll tell you, lane one, it seems to have older asphalt, and also we have that kitty litter, quote unquote, on the track, but I'm not seeing any major advantage from lane one to lane two. No, the playing field's level, as we looked at qualifying early this morning, and uh, lane two was definitely wetter than lane one, but that's burned off in this uh, lovely sunshine that we've had today. Dimitri Shrivni, oh man, that was in difficulty in the spins. Oh, oh. And a huge mistake So by James, James has taken out the barrels. Dimitri now finding his rhythm around the tractor tire barrel. Dimitri and nice and fluid around the tractor tires. And James obviously gutted about uh, his rear end clipping those barrels and that uh, he, he came in, his car almost looked as if his shoulders, its shoulders were slumped yeah. as he came into the uh, to the end zone there. And we're looking at the barrel, the, 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 the dent in it that's been taken out. And Dimitri once again broken the minute barrier, similar time to last time, 57 seconds. Yeah, so 57 and a 102. As long as it's clean, Dimitri should grab the win. We didn't see any penalties from Dimitri, but let's have that confirmed by uh, the closer scrutiny of the judges. Remember our next battles, we continue on here in the battles. Oh, look at that. So James does suffer that penalty. There it is. Dimitri Shrivni gets the win in the SCR. Jim Connor, Subaru, as you said, the battle of the Subarus. Car number 70 gets the win. Dimitri Shrivni forging our semifinals. So that was a, uh, oh, a, it was a front end. It was a front end nudge, and then he kicked it away with his back end. It's almost as if he was doing that deliberately. Yeah, unfortunately for him, that yeah, def definitely not deliberately. He, 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 he knew he knew he needed to keep it tight, but just too tight. And our director getting a beautiful shot of, of the. Uh, That's the moon. Looks, looks like yes, but I was going to say, is it, is it full? <laughs> is it was it waxing or is it waning or is it full? It's a, it's it's certainly full or very near. Yeah, it's, uh, again, a beautiful day, a little brisk, but the track stays hot as we continue on. And Jake Archer entered into, what, about it, that's the moon. <laughs> yeah, just reminding me what planet that, yeah, was. that, that, that was. Eddie, what planet are you on? That's, that's, that's the moon, that, we're on Earth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not the sun, that's the moon. <laughs> All right, so there's Andy Stevens. Andy Stevens had some words with him during the, during the break. Andy and Stevens and Jack Archer. Jake, Jake, Archer, Jake Archer. Archer. Jake Archer and Jake Archer, he, uh, he you know, he, he is one to watch. Here we go, Jake Archer. Coming in, Kamikaze, Subaru Wagon. And the ESL Subaru on the other side in lane one. Ah, uh, yes, this is, this is the Kamikaze Subaru Wagon that we saw being so tight in qualifying. And it, it brings a smile to my face, because I just think, well, that's that's a car that you take your kids to school in, huh? Yeah. But no, take them, take them to, uh, to the racetrack. Well, you'd certainly Start be quite like shaken up if you did it like this. Yeah, right? There's definitely some videos out there with kids <laughs> ripping around. <laughs> And here comes Archer around the final zigzag barrel. But look at that. So far, they're mirroring each other. Yeah, we're seeing Stevens really apply some pressure here. And Stevens, this is his first competition in dry conditions in this car. He's only driven this car two times before in the wet. He's prominently a rear wheel drive vehicle owner. But look at that right it there was, at the end. It was all one on the last tractor tire. They were mirroring each other exactly right up until the last tractor tire. But then the 62 car just kept it a little bit tighter. And so he's in under that magic minute. Andy Stevens. That's Andy and, Stevens. Andy yeah. Stevens just about, about, a, about a second separating them. But uh, I got to tell you, knowing Jake, uh, he, he's knowing Jake. He gets really fired up. He needs to stay calm. He needs to stay focused. With that minute, he just needs to keep it clean. So let's walk you through this, and you can really see how the two cars mirror each other through the course, right through the course, right until the very last obstacle, the giant tractor tires. And Andy Stevens in that blue car, in, in, in the blue Subaru, just kept it a little bit tighter going through those giant tractor tires. And that tightness on that very last obstacle meant that he had a second on Jake. So 
as they mirror each other and go into the next, into, into the uh, mirrored next event. All right, here we go. Coming down into the first turn. Remember, they do not need to initiate in drift, similar to that of the rear wheel drive vehicles. They do not need to initiate past that no man's land. Nice job by Archer so far. Oh, look at that, Stevens, a bit of a jump on Archer. And again, they're mirroring each other, exactly. And let's see what happens in that last spin cycle, because that is where this battle is lost and won. And we've seen that battle yeah. lost and won many times today. Saw that in with, that we, last saw that with, we saw that with Marco. Absolutely. That's why I say you need to, oh, you need to keep your focus. They've both gone into that, oh, into my the barrels, goodness. exactly they the are same. Identical right now. It's they are separated at birth so far, but actually, oh, Jake, get a little Jake bit of a, a jump. Bit tighter on that last one, so they mirrored each other. Oh, and cones, insult to injury for Stevens. Stevens hits two obstacles. That's going to be a point, or excuse me, two ouch. second penalty, I believe, times two. Ouch! Double ouch. So that was interesting. They they mirrored each other exactly in the uh, in in the first rendition, and then exactly in the second rendition, and even to the point that one car just yeah. won it on the last. It, it was uh, Andy that won it at the last at the very last uh, spin cycle on the first revolution, yeah. and then Jake who won it at that very same obstacle, having mirrored each other exactly. Here we go. But. Are we going to have some penalties? No. No, it's 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 judged to be clean and almost identical, but Jake just in a fraction of a second earlier. So let's see what the cumulative time tells us. It's been so close between Jake and Andy on this one. And there it is. Oh, that, was that was the accumulative time. You threw me off there. Oh, so sorry, Jake man. Archer gets the victory. That was, that was, it, there was a lot to process. I think we're more baffled that there wasn't a penalty because I, I yeah. thought for sure that them hitting the cones, but uh, the guess girls not. are not looking baffled at all. No. They're looking extremely focused and blowing us kisses. There you go. So Jake Archer advances on. There was no penalty. It was after the gantry. So Jake must be gutted because that was just so close between uh, Jake Archer and Andy Stevens there. You get psyched so, here. There's some serious tire warming and larging and what is it called when you're doing? Is that is just is that called just hooning? Uh, just yeah, just doing some burnies, doing some <laughs> circle burners, some serious donuts, warming up some tires, doing some brodies, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, hooning and hoon again. Lewis. Lewis Jones and Jonathan Bucky Buck, simply known as Bucky. A lot of these guys running uh, one headlight, no headlights at all. Not mandatory here in Gymkhana in the barrel sprint. As soon as you said that, he switched them on. I know, right? You just gave him a little flash uh -huh. there. So, Bucky about to throw it down there in that, uh, that sky blue kamikaze vehicle and then uh, Lewis Jones also another kamikaze vehicle and Lewis Jones was was the guy that that in the LCQ just owned it he absolutely dominated dominated the competition and uh, and and won the whole thing last night so now here he is fighting to get into the semifinals And back to the action here as Lewis Jones. He is in that lane two as Bucky. A little slow crawling here from Jones. Now he throws it out there. Get some smoke created. Lewis Jones oh. keeping it fluid there in the Kamikaze Subaru. In the other lane there, just taking a glance over. Bucky had a mistake around the bollard as he left the Corbeau seat. You can see the, uh, the green and black. Arrowed Ballard, he had issues with that. So it looks like Lewis Jones is fractionally ahead of Bucky at the moment. Let's see what happens on the spin cycle, because as we've seen before, the race could be lost and won and all regained at this point. So Lewis so Jones out front, nice job. 
And one more turn. Now, I mean, you, you, you compare these runs to our previous runs, and unfortunately, they're really going to need to step up their game if they want to take out, you know, somebody like Dimitri or Jake Archer. Yeah, those guys are uh, are hot today, as hot as the as the, as the rear tires of almost every car that we've seen here today. And also another another driver that was pre-qualified, Matt Miller. He's in our next in our next head-to-head -head competition. So you see 101 and 104. So Lewis getting the better time there. So both of the boys, Jonathan and Lewis, have kept it clean. Both hovering around the one minute and both looking to improve on that in their mirrored, their mirrored run now. All right, here we go, Lewis Jones now there in lane one. Good execution on the sweeper into the Corvo seat. Nice job there. So look at that, Lewis, about a one second difference. Yeah, Lewis keeping it nice and tight and he's uh, as ahead as he was in the last one as he, we see him initiate that little uh, handbrake turn and another one in the figure of eight section of the course. Is Lewis gonna bring it home? Nice flick into the spin cycle. He's quite oh. wide around the barrel there. Big mistake over there on the other side in lane two from Bucky. Oh, oh dear, man. poor Bucky. He's lost concentration there, and he's uh, surely going to be out now. Yeah, that's that's going to seal the deal for Lewis Jones to get the victory unofficially, but uh, we'll find out shortly. And poor Jonathan Buck, Buck just uh, lost it in the last section of, of the course there. The driver's being waved away. And here we, we're looking at uh, Jonathan Buck, looking at what happens to make him lose concentration. And yeah, he just had he, he just had a moment there, didn't he, Jared? Yeah, it was it was, it was just a total man, just such a bummer for him. But uh, man, Lewis Jones showing you why and how, and continues on his success here. And there it is, Lewis Jones. Lewis Jones gets the victory and advances on to the semifinals. Yeah, Lewis Jones, uh, he's, he's rocked it with uh, a couple of times that are outside a minute, proving that if you just keep your head down and don't make any mistakes, that is one way of advancing. It, of course, it doesn't work every time, but 60% of the time, it works every time. There's, a, there's another one of those uh, famous San Diego film references. San Diego San, San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> Where'd okay, you, where'd, so you, where'd you get that? The last quarterfinal coming up. This is it. It's on deck. Matt Miller versus Dominic Flitney. Dominic Flitney and the ESL Subaru rounding out that team. See if he can fly that Flitney flag into the semifinal. Here we go. But he's got to get past Matt Miller in that kamikaze Japs beat Subaru. All right, coming to the Corbo seat. Wraps it around. Eddie, you got to think that also, you know, yeah, we have the big floodlights coming on. They look stylish. They look good. But uh, it, it's getting darker quicker. So these guys yep, really, need to, really need to focus. Yeah. Oh, oh and we've got, a, we've got a, a bad nudge there from Matt Miller in the kamikaze car. Front end nudge. So he's going to be hoping to make a really, really good time to somehow make that up. And he's going furiously, frantically into the drums and the spin cycle section. And he's going to be hoping that Dominic Flintney is going to be also making a mistake. But Dom has been very uh, consistent through Dom, qualifying today. Dom's been very precise. He's performing surgery on the track. Oh. And just as I say that, he has to throw on the reverse lights. Not just the lights, but put the car back in reverse as he had a major flub around the tractor tire barrels. Oh man. So both of them having some mistakes. I don't think it was a I don't think he hit the tractor tires, but uh, with our naked eye, you know, we're, where he was, he, his back end was facing us. I'm feeling Dominic Flintney's uh, bright pink fluorescent <laughs> tires. I've got some I've got some trainers that color. Yeah. All right. <laughs>
You, you, I, I have to gather, Eddie, that you have trainers of every color. No, just p in the pink and purple spectrum. Okay. That's right. how that's how I roll. Oh, that's your. I've, that's... I've been I've been rocking the pinks for about ten years. Now. Okay, that's your wheelhouse. Since my first, well, yeah, that's since my first Nike Vandals. Got but it. we're walking through now and seeing what seeing what happened. Just right about here. So yes, he just he, he uh, just overcooked. He just overcooked it, didn't he? Yeah, but he didn't hit it, so that that that's a good thing. Oh, look at that. But so. that's 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 made a level playing field. But yeah. Matt came in a lot quicker. So we're looking at 101 for Matt, 108 for Dominic. So 108, 101. Here we go. Let's alternate the courses, the lanes. Matt Miller in lane one. Dominic Flitney in two. Miller gets cooled off. Now here we go. As Flitney brings it around the Corbeau C. Nice job by Miller, but it looks like, oh man, they are neck and neck. Miller wow, approaches they are the checkered flag. Just mirroring each other around this course. I think that uh, Matt Miller might be just a fraction of a second ahead. Oh, and Dom, poor Dom, despite his amazing tyres, has made another mistake. There must be a lot of pressure at this stage of the uh, championships, but oh dear, and another mistake. They're mirroring each other in every way. One of the drivers makes a mistake, and then the other one, rather than getting smug, makes a, makes a mistake as well. We've had several losses of concentration or just little moments in this. I think we're going to have to see it. Wow, look at that. They're backing it up. They're saying, get on out. Let's see what we got here. Flitney and Miller. And remember, Miller had that large advantage and uh, Flitney with that about seven second gap after that first battle. But there were a couple of little moments in this. Let's walk through again and see what happened. Oh, it was, it was okay. So, uh, poor yeah. Don Flitney nudged, nudged the checkered cone there, and going into the giant tractor tires, it's just underpowered through that. And so, Nick with. All right, J Dimitri Shribney versus Jake Archer. These two gentlemen saw each other in battle last year, and uh, these these guys are are just bitter rivals here on course. So uh, it, this should be this should be one for the books, Eddie. This is this is going to be a good one. I mean, this should this should be a final battle, to be quite honest. But you, you see somebody like Lewis Jones, I, I, he really needs to tighten it up in order to take out Matt Miller. But Matt Miller had some mistakes as well yeah. in the in that quarterfinal. Yeah, a, a lot of these uh, Terminator-like, you know, supposedly robotic drivers proving themselves human today. Yeah, they, I don't bleed. I, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> so Dimitri Shribney, Jake Archer, the other battle in the semifinals: Lewis Jones, Matt Miller. Who's going to advance on to the finals? Which two drivers are going to the third place consolation battle? So Jake Archer apparently blew his engine last week and had to find a new one. So he's uh, he's now <laughs> running on a brand new engine, and brand new engines, as we all know, can have teething problems. Right. He's not exactly uh, going with the owner's uh, handbook on running it in. No, most definitely not. So Archer brings around. Look at Dimitri, a big gap. Grand Canyon of a gap of time between them. Oh, but just as I say that, Jake fights back. Grabs his bow and arrow and takes aim at Dimitri. Dimitri, a wide swing. And he hesitated a little through, yeah, that, he uh, through that section. Whereas I think. Uh, Jake looking a little bit more fluid in that yeah. Subaru wagon. Yeah, look, Jake a lot tighter. He's gaining yeah. some ground there on the tractor and they tire. Are so close. That was that was a great effort there by Jake, and that's where you can easily we've seen a lot of the drivers really, you know, quote unquote, blow it. Look, look at, that. at that. Half a second. Fractions of a second between the two of them, Dimitri and Jake. Let's see if they had any nudges or anything that the judges might have spotted in terms of penalties. We think that they went through clean, but let's have the official confirmation. 
57.3, 57.8 from the drivers, no penalty. Two hot and clean times, say the judges for Dimitri and Jake. 57.33, 57.84, it is all to play for. So let's alternate them. You take lane one, Dimitri. All right, here we go, Dimitri in lane one. Archer, lane two. Off they go, Archer gets the jump, a little out front, but it's all pending the start line and breaking that laser starter. Jake Archer, nice job. Into that baller. Look at that, the sun setting, a great shot here. Dramatic setting for the Gymkhana Grid European Gauntlet. We are in the semifinals. Dimitri or Jake Archer, who's gonna get it? Well, Dimitri seems to be fractionally ahead, but in that spin cycle section, Jake always uh, seems to be more fluid, and that fluidity um, means results. Having said that, Dimitri looking very fluid through the, uh, through the washing machine, machine section. Nice job by Dimitri right now. See now where, where Jake, oh man, Jake, an absolutely, look, at he just keeps getting wider and wider. And I think that is going to inevitably give Dimitri the victory here. It was a major mistake there by Dimitri, or excuse me, by Jake Archer. So it was that 55 and a 101. Wow, wow, look that's at that, 50, 55. That's blazing that's a, that is a hot time. time. Has anybody done that faster than that today? Uh, we've seen, we, I, I believe we've seen some 55s, 56s. I've, uh, I was keeping track. Yeah, Adam Elder at a No, I don't think we've seen a 55. That's so the first 55 of Dimitri, the day. Dimitri, Dimitri, congratulations if you can hear us. Yeah. 55 seconds, that is the hottest time we've seen today, and it's a clean time. Look and at that. There it is. So, Dimitri Shribny gets the victory. Jake Archer gets knocked out. A cumulative 153. I don't think we're going to see a better time than Ooh. that. Well, I say that, but I live in hope. The yeah. eternal optimist. So now we hand down to Kiri who is with our race winner. And uh, if Dimitri, uh, well, he should have a very big smile on his face. Dimitri, congratulations. Two clean laps and one in 55 seconds. Incredible. Thank you. Yeah, well, I was pushing my best. <laughs> I think maybe not best, but uh, trying to compromise on the reliability of the car and my skills and just found that uh, perfect balance between both. So I think that's what actually led me to the victory. Seemed like you did find the perfect balance into the final. Can you do it? Uh, of course I can. <laughs> of course he can. There you have it. <laughs> So that's uh, Dimitri, our winner in the hottest time that we've had, we, we've had so far. But as uh, you heard from the horse's mouth, might not be, um, he, might not be his best. He's right. he's gunning for a faster time, and we'll see. And uh, he and he means what he knows what he's talking about. This man is the Eastern European Drift Champion of 2012, and and he's had that car since 2001. Is that is that pretty unusual to have a car for that long? 14 years. Yeah, no, uh, Dimitri, uh, he's definitely he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And uh, Dimitri Shribny, again, from Ukraine, he's the Fueltopia Barrel Sprint 2015 champion. And now he lives in, in UK as uh, he is definitely a fierce competitor. And yeah, he's had that car for some time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great to see him, you know, have that confidence just, just over time. And uh, can you do it? Of course I can. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say it. All right, so a real treat oh, wow. before our semi-final. We are sending out, ladies and gentlemen, we are sending out the Hoonigan himself. And you're going to get a cockpit view of the most watched drifter in the universe. Yeah, the head Hoonigan in charge, Ken Block, about to hit the skid pad. And I believe he's got his good friend Ryan Turk piloting the Hoonigan, Jim Connor Escort Mark II. Make some noise, if you will, Santa Pod. We got a nice party going on as the disco ball lights up. The party continues here at Santa Pod Raceway. Man, a great show out here. Eddie Temple Morris, Jared Deanna giving you some play-by-play -play action of the fourth installment ever of Jim Connor Grid. I, I'm looking for some some high heels and some disco music all of a sudden. I don't know why. <laughs> well, but let's we, do we some rock, let's do some rock and roll. Better yet. All right. So, are we seeing these two great cars um, go against each other head to head? 
That's amazing. Just a bit, of, a bit of a fun demo. They didn't, yeah. start, they didn't start from the actual start line, but it's a, it's a great way to just light them up and spin the track and light up some tires. And so you're seeing muscularity versus uh, something a little more balletic, your friend Ryan in that, uh, in that yeah, Escort. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just two different breeds of vehicle. You know, the, the iconic vehicle, the Escort Mark II, which has such a great racing heritage, especially here in the UK, and obviously with WRC and Rally Car, and that car was developed to be a rally car. Ken Block loves that car, it's his personal car. He wouldn't do something unique with it, so with the growing sport of Gymkhana, he built it up, but uh, that Hoonicorn, you know, you look at that thing, 845 horsepower, the first ever purpose-built all-wheel drive Ford Mustang, performance Mustang, I might add. If you want to check out that vehicle, Jim Connor 7. Jim Connor 7 is the feature, and and so that's, that's incredible. That's the one where he starts off in a uh, in a warehouse in LA with the car literally chained up, and then he just wheel spins and wheel spins, and you'll see more smoke than uh, than, you, than your average uh, than your average war, uh, and then and then the chain breaks, and he just rips through LA, taking in some um, some some landmarks that you would know very well, Ryan. The, the, uh, uh. Wow, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the whole video and the video series overall was just an idea of Ken Block and, and one of his one of his associates and said, hey, let's do this fun video. And it's just totally, totally spiraled into just making him an internet star. But not only does he do that, I mean, there's, there's more Americans that have been on the moon that have scored points in WRC. Just to give you an idea, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, there's great racing heritage from from uh, the Scandinavians and Finnish, and I mean, you, you get a lot of you know European drivers um, that that do well in the WRC. And Ken Ken's just had an affinity for for rally for quite some time. And then, like I said, this iconic car built this thing up to compete in Jim Connor and Ryan Turk, one of the best drifters in the world. He handed the keys to him metaphorically. Obviously, he doesn't have a start key, has a push start. <laughs> yes. But you got to check out that vehicle up close and personal. And, and it's quite a treat to for this to be aired around the world. And uh, look at that, the Unicorn wow. and the Mark II under the lights and blowing their own flames and uh, just added some more fire. Thanks, Jared. And apologies for calling you Ryan 30 seconds ago. No problem. <laughs> no problem, Steady Eddie. <laughs> yeah, look at that. My God, the amount of smoke that that car is generating. But then you think with the 875 horses under the bonnet, it's probably hard not to generate some smoke on a, on a surface like this. And Ryan Turk behind the wheel of that Escort as we go inside the cockpit. Ken Block, you can see, look, at he, he's currently in first gear according to his, uh, <laughs> his heads-up display, or not heads-up display, but his digital display. You can see that big hood scoop out front and it gives the old Houdini. First you see him, now you don't. Make some noise if you will. Ken Block, the Hoonicorn, Ryan Turk, and his Escort Mark II to unbelievable blue oval machines. I mean, Eddie, you know, when, when he got called for this gig, hey, you want to do this thing? Da, 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 da. What? What is this? <laughs> like, you know, and yeah, this is my first one. Well, I was aware of what drifting was, but I n I've never seen anything like this. And I, I can see that there's that the, the broadcast is going to get, a, there are going to be some new fans, and I'm going to be one of them. Right fan, on. New fan number one. I'm definitely coming back for some more of this. It's amazing. Well, you got to love it there, as Ryan Turk looks like he is out yeah. in the middle, and he is posturing. Look at that. Oh, oh the man. disco ball is cascading light across this uh, arena. We just had the most beautiful sunset, and now we've got uh, the death light star. shining on, the, on, on this <laughs> Death Star. Yeah. All right, looks like Ryan Turk rocking a Bernie as Ken Block gives you a few. Ryan Turk, Escort Mark II filled donuts. <laughs> There's some pyrotechnics going on along on the on the outside of this venue. It's like uh, it's almost Armageddonish. It's like Mad Max. Yeah. Reveal him. <laughs> Reveal me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, look at wow. that thing. The cockpit filled with smoke. Oh, my God, I've seen I've seen less spinning in a Carl Cox DJ set, a four deck mashup set. That's incredible. <laughs> Oh, man, make some noise here in the building, and obviously you at home, hopefully you set your DVRs, you're recording this, and uh, thank you for being part of history here. Jim Khanna, 2015 installment, who will be our overall champion? And then, of course, you know, who's going to go against these guys? These are obviously the smoke show, but uh, again, the magicians.
out here on track as they will do battle for fun uh, against the winners of the respective class. Ryan Turk and that Escort Mark II will go against the winner of the rear wheel drive class and Ken Block will go against the winner of the all wheel drive class. Yeah, two such interesting cars and two cars that are so far away from what they were when they rolled off the production line in uh, one in Detroit and one in uh, Dagenham here in England. So we, we st we've still got a lot of smoke happening. That's a lot of smoke happening here. And uh, we've seen these two absolute legends in these two cars that are so far removed from what they were when they rolled off their production lines, pulling more donuts than a New York police convention. That is an understatement. That is an understatement far from the factory, the factory fit and finish from these vehicles. And we are going to advance on into semifinals when Ken Block exits stage right. We are getting our semifinals continuing. Lewis Jones and Matt Miller. We got an update. Matt Miller did call a competition five minute timeout. And with just three seconds left, three seconds left, he, uh, he broke a boost hose and, and he got it to the start line. So he was ready to go. So Miller and Jones will do battle in the semifinals as Dimitri Shrivny waits in the wings as we're still riding with, uh, with Ken Block, GoPro camera as a look at that just get a, get a full view of Ken Block and his pit yeah and uh, and and this pit view and the fact that we had a your update about the broken line let's hear it for the hard working crews yeah because you know that these superstar drivers would be nothing without their hard working crews yeah most just definitely to, same 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 as us let's hear it for our crew on this on this great broadcast so semi-final two all-wheel drive battle of the Subarus who have we got lining up? We have Matt Miller and Lewis Jones. That's Lewis Jones there. Like I said, look at the mood lighting. We're not trying to set the mood here. Obviously, we just saw the disco ball, but uh, you know, you're, you're gonna want to need some headlights here in this situation. You can see the party continues. We'll get everything set back up, but uh, you definitely obviously want to see where you're headed. So Matt Miller, Lewis Jones. The winner going against Dimitri Shrivny in the finals. Matt Miller in that kamikaze vehicle with the crazy rap, Lewis Jones in the more subdued white vehicle with the kamikaze on the side. So both, I could say, you know, the kamikaze Subaru and you wouldn't know which one, but. <laughs> yeah, the, the, we've, we've proved today time and again that the loudness of the paint job has no bearing on the, uh, on the speed of the car or the largesse of the driver. Most definitely not, and, and Matt Miller, he, he was pre-qualified coming into this competition as, uh, as he won a previous round of the Fueltopia Barrel Sprint Series. So here we go, the other half of the semifinals. Who's going against Dimitri Shrivny? We're about to find out. We're in spooky green lighting, making it somehow look even more tense. Just waiting for which one of these monsters of a Subaru is going to get the victory here and go to the finals. And away they go. Oh, look at that. Miller already suffering a little bit of underperformance. And he was the one that called the competition timeout and just made it to the line with three seconds left. Lewis Jones keeping it fluid around the giant bog roll. Good execution there. Oh, and Matt Miller. Oh, uh, Matt's the, shaking the, his head there. He's, I think he's just pulling out now. He's shaking his head. He's gutted. He's had some kind of a problem or a... a... Yeah, the universal head signal of frustration inside a race car. The shaking of the head. That looks like it'll be all she wrote for Matt Miller. Oh, and oh, he's man. thrown his helmet down in disgust. Oh, man, he's... And, he's, and he's just got to see his kamikaze teammate of Lewis Jones finish out the course, and it looks like that'll be all for Miller as, as he already called his competition timeout within this round. So Jonesy threw and threw flying solo. Let's walk back through that and see what happened to Matt because we missed that hair up in the commentary box. Let's see what happened in Matt in the number seven car. 
just around the Was it a problem with a car, or uh, it, 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 it seems to be a problem with the car? It's, it's lurching. It's, it, it looks like some kind of a gearbox problem, maybe. Well, he obviously had a cracked boost hose earlier, so it could be just something fell loose there. And when the car loses boost, it's, it's going to lose a ton of power, and it's okay. just going to be down on power. So unfortunately for Miller, you know, it's 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 just something that can't be fixed. So I, I assume that, uh, and there it is. Yeah, there's a DNF from Miller. Lewis Jones with a 103, which isn't the fastest time. Like I said, if Jones, you know, well, look at this. Jones is going to the finals. Jones, he's kept his head down. And poor old Matt had, well, a technical failure. A, uh, a, a like a costume malfunction at a big awards show. We went, with these cars, there is there's so much going on under the bonnet and elsewhere, and th th that there's so much to go wrong. So a technical failure means that Lewis Jones has rocked it and goes through to the next round. Okay, so is he, go is he going to just race solo now? The answer is yes. So we've got the uh, rear wheel drive playoff now to look forward to. Adam Elder now lining up battle for third place, this is. Adam lining up with Marco. Marco's in that naturally aspirated Toyota, proving that you don't need a turbo or a supercharger or any of that fancy stuff. A good, reliable car with a good, reliable driver. And here he is, battling for the number three. Adam and Marco, poised. Adam's in, his Nis, in the Nissan S14. The marshals just uh, letting them know some vital information before they start. And here we go. And we are racing in the battle for third. Adam Elder takes the first corner just ahead of Marco in that Terminator car, that beautiful paint job of that Terminator. Keeping it tight around the giant loo roll, as I like to call it. Keeping things quite fluid. And he's fra still fractionally ahead of Marco. Yeah, the Croatian Crusher just keeping it consistent, remember. Going for that third position, this is the final podium spot to earn one of those weapons of mass destruction as he destructed all the field except two. As Marco brings it in around the double barrel in the spin cycle. Remember, he gained a lot of time here. Yeah, Marco proving that the Marco actually, well, actually, both of them, look how tight that is. He's almost dancing with those giant uh, tractor tires. That was like uh, BBC on a Saturday night. That was Strictly Come <laughs> Dancing. He was actually, he was pirouetting around those. It was balletic. Right, so there we are seeing So it. both of them with sexy times, 57 and 56. Hopefully both boys keeping it clean. Both such tight drivers in the spin cycle sections. They were, uh, my gosh, they could have just, uh, they could have kissed them. And there's the times, 56.58 for Adam Elder and a 57.63 for Marco. No penalties assessed on either side. So some clean racing. Look at that, 56 and 57. 56 it's amazing and 57. Time. And uh, so in the mirrored next round in, in this battle for third, it is all to play for. They are pretty much neck and neck going into this. And we're off. Here we go. Send it. Elder, Marco. Marco, I just love the open face helmet, the kind of vintage looking livery, and the, the bright red gloves. Just just keeping a calm, cool, and collect, like Mr. Bean on a, on, a, on a Sunday morning. Adam in that Terminator car, always fast out of the trap, but Marco, just Marco, the Croatian crusher, just keeps his head down, he keeps focused. He's a real no nonsense driver, and with the, the tightness of his cornering, 
you just never know what might happen. You can get ahead of him, but he will just come back at you. Yeah, look at that, Marco. Elder looks like he's slight advantage over Marco right now. And Marco comes around into the spin cycle. Elder exits it, expedites the first portion of the spin cycle, the double barrel shotgun. Is Elder gonna grab the final podium spot? Well, he grabs the finish line first. Do Whoa, oh. and Marco, the f this is the first time we've seen that. Yeah, this is the first time that anyone has overcooked on the end zone. Marco just uh, chomping at the bit there, sniffing the stables. D uh, Jim Carna is, a, is an equestrian it is. thing, isn't it? There's it comes a lot from, of horses. Exactly. So he, he uh, it, it, when, when you're on a horse, when, when you go horse riding as a, as a non-horse rider, okay. you, you, you get on a horse that you don't know. And as you, you, you do this sort of, you, this, this course, and yeah. as you as you turn around, you sniff the horse, sniff the stables, and goes really fast. As soon as you, <laughs> at, right at the end, it sniffs the, the stables. That's what happened. Oh, so Marco, a little buck in Bronco there. So look at that, 156.47, and Adam Elder with a 154.91 grabs third place here at Gymkhana Grid, the European Gauntlet 2015. Adam Elder putting it down, and you know what? He lived up to it, the Terminator, but uh, unfortunately, just uh, he had he had two more, two more gentlemen that uh, were just a little faster. Yeah, and that uh, his horse sniffing the stable and just uh, getting there too fast didn't help. Okay, our next battle here, our next race, we're gonna revisit that of third place. Jake it's Archer that. and Matt Miller. Thank you. Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> look at Marco. Some, uh, look at that. Still some jovial, the Croatian crusher. Hey, <laughs> he earned a nickname, you know, and I don't, I don't just give those out to anybody. Look, at there's a man who loves his job. He, uh, he didn't win that, but he's still absolutely loving it. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's out there like he's celebrating, like he's just won the lottery. So Kiri, who is talking to everyone trackside, is now with our last winner and third place man, Adam Elder. Adam Elder, congratulations, you're on the podium. It's third place 2015, how are you feeling? Yeah, feeling really good. Uh, shame I didn't get the top battle, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that and I've got fastest time for the day, so yeah, good result today, good result. Fastest time of the day, 56.5, I heard you shouting it, you're very happy. Uh, I'm very, very happy as well, yeah, to know that I can actually put the time down, I've just got to deal with the pressure and uh, next time I'll be here and I'm gonna, next time I'll hopefully take the first. Fantastic, congratulations. All right, well, look at that, Adam Elder. He's, you know, he's stoked, like you said, I, I would have loved to go for the victory, but I'll settle for that. And, and again, thank you to Kerry, getting all the, all the, all the nitty gritty down there in the pits. So we are, again, revisiting the all-wheel drive category. It's Jake Archer, Matt Miller. Who's going to get uh, the victory here after Matt Miller, unfortunately, is the car 100%? Is he sick? Did he go see a doctor about it? Did he check his cough? Did he tell him to uh, turn sideways? So we'll see. <laughs> Matt Miller Did you just say check and cough? <laughs> <laughs> Jake Archer, Matt Miller. Jake Archer's been running uh, really strong. He had some mistakes here and there. But uh, Archer and Miller, they are about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the third place, the final podium spot here at Jim Connor Grid, European Gauntlet 2015. And away they go. Send here it. they go, neck and neck. So Matt Miller there in lane one. The Kamikaze, you can see it there. It's the sedan versus the hatchback or the, the wagon. And he was so fluid around the giant chair and around the, uh, the giant toilet roll there, almost mirroring each other. He's As looking. Matt is just a fractionally ahead in lane one. Yeah, Matt looking like he, he definitely is hitting his stride, looking a lot more comfortable, looking confident. The car looks to be running good. A little loose break, breaking of the traction there. Look at him. Tit for tat coming to the spin cycle. Matt overcooking it, oh, almost hitting the wall. It. Oh, boy. And look at these guys, both kamikaze teammates, they want to take each other out. This is this is a, this is barroom bragging right here. Ballroom barroom bragging rights going down. Oh, did, they, did Matt looks like he's about a second ahead of his kamikaze stable mate. More and more there stock. We are. 
More horse talk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't stop with the horse analogy. So we are at less than a second apart at uh, Matt on 59 and, uh, and his stablemate Jake uh, just on a minute dead. So the sun's gone down really fast. It seems only just like seconds ago when we had that beautiful sunset. That was uh, the moon, Eddie. That was the moon. Well, I'm we're, kidding. We're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which one was that? Is that? No. Nope. Yeah, I, I, you've got me confused as to which planet is which now. 59.33 from Miller, 1 minute 56 from Jake Archer. No penalties assessed. Yes, both boys keeping it clean. That's the way we like it. Using their spurs, getting back into the start gates, and away they go. More horse. the race. So Jake Archer gets third place here at Jim Connor Grid 2015. All right, so now let's go back to rear wheel drive. And down in the pits, of course, Kiri is with our third place finisher, Jake Archer. Well, Jake Archer still smoking. Congratulations, third place finish on the podium. You must be pleased. Yeah, it'd have been better to battle, Matt, uh, with great mates, teammates and everything else. But I'm just glad I made it through the end of the weekend, to be honest, after blowing my engine up last Sunday. Um, I hadn't drove the car until Friday morning, first thing with a new engine. It's probably about 180 horsepower down the normal engine. So I'm just glad we made it to the end and I'm glad that I took a podium. And third again. <laughs> you can't complain, you can't complain. No, not at all. I'm, a podium's better than, than nothing, so third, it is what it is. Thank it you. Really is. I just want to thank Andy for lending me the engine. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> there you go. So there's Jake Archer with that lovely Birmingham accent. You've got to love that Birmingham accent. <laughs> so we've got the big one now. Here it is. Um, tell everybody what this is The now. finals are set. Here we go. Danny Cross, can he upset our defending Jim Connor Grid 2014 champion, or will Luke Woodham go back to back here at Santa Pod Raceway? Four years it all began for Luke Woodham. We've made our way over to Spain, to Madrid, and now here we are back in the UK, and Luke Woodham flying that Union Jack. Can he take it to the top once again? Danny Cross, he really wants to get in his way, and I know you will have a huge smile on his face, and Luke Woodham, does he break his tradition? We saw him in car, he's all thumbs. Here we go, here make we go. some noise, Santa Pa. All right, Luke Woodham, nice and clean into the sweeping turn. Luke Woodham is always clean. He's such a clean driver. I hope I just don't I have just jigged him yeah. with the, comments, the commentator's kiss of death. <laughs> well, Danny Cross would love for you to do that as we are seeing. Look at this. Now, they that's what I'm saying. each other exactly, Luke aren't they? Luke Woodham doesn't have headlights. I don't know how he is doing. He's driving by muscle memory. I tell driving. you what he's doing. He's using the force. Oh, snap. Here we go. <laughs> so Luke Woodham around that Samco urchin, the asteroid, whatever you want to call it, coming into the spin cycle. Nice job. You can see on the other side, Danny Cross. Look at that. Danny, they are neck and neck, Eddie. Look how tight that is. He is just very, very friendly with that uh, giant Ooh, Archer, car, a giant little bit of a flub and there. Look at them. They mirrored each other all the way. It's going to be fractions of a second between them. Hopefully, they didn't kiss or nudge anything on the way. They're both such tight and such consistent drivers, and there you have it. 58 and 58, both with really sexy times, just fraction of a second between them. It is all to play for as we go into the mirrored round of this, the big one, between Danny Cross and Luke Woodham. Both clean, there we are, 58 dead and 58-25.
Remember, not only are they getting the victory, they're getting cash, they're getting a trophy, they're getting a crazy car, they're getting an RC car, and the winner goes against Ryan Turk in the Escort Mark II. Danny Cross a little crawling off of that finish line as Luke Woodham, like I said, I, I, I don't know if you saw it, when Luke Woodham left that tire barrel, it seemed that he, he straightened up right there at the end. He could have definitely scrubbed some more time. Yep. So here we go, Luke Woodham seems to be out front in front of Danny Cross. Is Danny Cross gonna take it to the top? And oh. Luke Woodham, well, we're seeing, uh, that, we're seeing Danny there, but we were seeing Luke Woodham without his lights on. We've still not had any official confirmation that he's even got his eyes open. We think he's right. using the force. Right. right. By the power invested in Luke Woodham, is he going back to back? Danny Cross comes out of the spin, spi spin cycle. Luke Woodham. One more 360, he'll be ahead of Danny Cross. We'll see what penalties are assessed and who gets the rear-wheel drive victory here at Santa Pond Raceway. Luke, the force is strong in you. Oof. He, uh, we'll see if he's gone to the dark side here. So they were 58-58 before and 59-59 right now. They are just, they, they were, it's like they were separated at birth, these two. 59, so it's 58-04 on that first run by Danny Cross. 59.9 on the second. Luke Woodham at a 58.25, and there we go. So and look Luke, at those times. Luke has just scraped it. Yes, the Jedi. Luke the Jedi Woodham, Luke, as we're gonna call him from now on. Luke Woodham with a 157.69 grabs the win as Danny Cross gets second with 158.95 and a celebration and the fireworks ignite. Yes. For Luke Woodham, two-time yes. Gymkhana Grid champion, the celebration begins. Woo. Well done, Luke. Yes. No He's... headlights, but all the excitement and all the smiles and joy in the world. Look at that. The fist pump says it all. But guess what? He's got to get back in the saddle. More horse analogies because he's got to go against the pony that is the Ford Escort Mark II. Look at that smile of Luke yes. Woodham. Punching the air now, but it's not over because he's got to go up against. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's so happy, but he's got to go up against Ryan Turk in that Dagenham dustbin, and Ryan is going to be looking to wipe the smile off Luke's face. And that is purely for bragging rights, as Luke already locks it up. Luke, lock it up, Woodham. As Danny Cross, hey. You know, hats off to Danny Cross. He was, you know, Danny was an LCQ driver. He finished third overall yesterday in LCQ. He fought for it through the rain. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and throw it down. We saw the smiles. Now let's hear from our winner, who Kiri is with now. <laughs> the celebrations have started, Luke Woodham. Well done, congratulations. Ooh. Thank you ever so much. Um, I really struggled to see, I'm not going to lie, the lights and that were amazing. You didn't have your lights on. Oh, well, <laughs> they actually broke, um, but yeah, anyway, we had to go over that. But yeah, it's, uh, I've actually won this twice in a row now, and I don't think anyone else has done that, so I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And well done, Danny Cross, he is driving, is amazing, he's come on so far, so quickly, so. 2015 champion, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so, the first man to win twice. Boom, double deuces for and, Luke Woodham. And thank you, Kiri. I wish you'd asked him if he'd actually had his eyes open during that. <laughs> we need official confirmation that he's not just using the force. There it is. So our finals are set here in all-wheel drive. Dimitri Shrivny, Lewis Jones, our one, two, and three is set for rear-wheel drive. Luke Woodham, Danny Cross, Adam Elder, your one, two, and three. We already know that Jake Archer grabbed third, unfortunately, with Matt Miller's retirement. But Dmitry Shrivny, originally from Ukraine, now living in the UK, hence the, uh, the Union Jack flag in his corner. And Lewis Jones, obviously from the UK as well, who was another driver making his way through the LCQ yesterday. So fighting through the rain, getting all wet, and here he is. He got number one yesterday, and now here he is in the final going for all the marbles. Here we go. Send it here at Santa Pod Raceway. Dmitry Shrivny out front, SCR. Jim Connor, purpose built vehicle. Lewis Jones in that kamikaze Subaru. Nice job by Dimitri. He started out kind of cold. I, I, I told you he was a threat and started out cold, but slowly been turning it on, pouring it up. 
Now remember the winner of this goes against Ken Block and the Hoonicorn. Yeah. Oh, Dimitri. Look at that way out front of Lewis Jones. I, I mean, like I said, with, with Jones, he needs to, he really needs to step up his game, especially going against somebody, somebody like Dimitri and that confidence too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all about your confidence and your positive mental attitude here. It's all about that PMA as Dimitri brings it on in. Remember, he was asked, uh, can you win? Of course I can, says the Kiri. Yeah, he was looking to uh, improve on that fabulous time that we saw before, and he's in at a uh, very sexy 57.5, with Lewis Jones in at one flat, which is no slouch. One more battle for cash, for trophy, for prizes, and then two more battles for bragging rights. Yes. The hero battles. Look at that, no penalties. One minute flat for Jones, 57 seconds for Dimitri. Jonesy and Dimitri keeping it clean on the first one as they line up for the mirrored battle to see who is going to take this year's title of all-wheel drive. Here we go, send it, Jared Dienda, Eddie Temple Morris, giving you the call here. Jim Conagrin, European Gauntlet 2015 All-Wheel Drive Finals. Dimitri Shrivny, Lewis Jones. Dimitri's so tight around that giant chair. Jonesy, keeping his head down, taking his time, oh. stuttering a little bit. It's like maybe he's lost confidence. I mean, he knows who he's, who he's going against. Dimitri Shrivny, a force to be reckoned with. He's won here before, he's, he's you know, ah, he knows. He knows who he's going against. Dimitri driving like a man possessed. You know, Dimitri Shrivny, he comes in as the Fueltopia Barrel Sprint 2015 champion and UK winner, as he has one more go round and it's gonna be his he's unofficial. Looking. Oh, and look at that. Lewis Jones nose is in to the tire barrel. Lewis Jones, he's gonna be gutted with that. But Dimitri was driving like a man, absolutely possessed in this final. And Jonesy just seems like he had a moment, lost a bit of confidence. Yeah. Oh dear. That definitely cost him there. That's gonna cost him the final, unfortunately. We, uh, we are conjecturizing at this time, but we will get official confirmation. Yes, there you go, two penalties. For Lewis, so there is our all-wheel drive champion. Congratulations, Dimitri Shribny. Dimitri Shribny, the celebration begins for him. Dimitri Shribny grabs another victory and defeats Lewis Jones with a time of 154.44 as Lewis Jones. Man, look at that. That's a huge gap as far as time. 17 seconds, near 17 seconds, just shy uh, with the 211.79. Dimitri Shribny grabs first. And he's going to go against Ken Block. And man, wasn't it was it Dimitri that had the 55? It was Dimitri that had the yes. 55. Dimitri has has had the sexiest time of uh, of the whole day so far. So that's going to give him an extra smile, and that's got to surely worry the big man in right? the bragging rights final. Oh, for sure. So we're going to hand down now to uh, Kiri, who is trackside with one Ukrainian who has got to have a very big smile on his face. <laughs> Dimitri, congratulations, 2015 champion, going up against Ken next. How are you feeling? I feel great. I was waiting for it for years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I just want to say thank you to everyone who made this event possible. And, uh, well, thanks to my sponsors, organizers, to all the drivers, everyone just done the perfect job. Uh, 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 maybe I said I was confident, but I wasn't. <laughs> but I'm confident against Block. <laughs> so well, you well. did an amazing time out there, so you can do it against Ken, do you think? Uh, well, Ken is a great driver. I mean, I respect him in any way. Um, so it, it just, I think it will be a very good showdown. So, you know, I'm looking forward to race. It's, it's just a pleasure to be next to him on the same grid. That's why I was battling these guys. Not to beat Ken, but we will see what happens. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you, Kiri. Privyet Dimitri, Minya Zavut, Eddie Temple Morris.
What? And I'm with Jared Deanda. <laughs> what was that? Where did that come from? Hello, Dimitri. My name is Eddie Temple Morris. Wow, good for you. All That's right. pretty much my only Russian. That's all you got. <laughs> That's pretty okay. much all I've got. All right. Uh, we, <laughs> another another horse analogy. You're a one trick <laughs> pony. I get it, Eddie Temple Morris. Well, uh, so this is it. We have our hero battle. Our winner, Luke Woodham, is going against Ryan Turk. Now, both these guys drift outside of doing Gymkhana. This is Ryan Turk's first four round, four go into Gymkhana or driving like this. He's, he's, he's fourth place in drifting in, in the Formula Drift Championship, and now he's piloting this Gymkhana Hoonigan Escort Mark II. Okay, here we have a huge battle for bragging rights. It's the big prize, Ryan Turk versus Luke Woodham. Ryan Turk in that Hoonigan Jim Connor Escort Mark II. Luke Woodham grabs the cash, grabs the prizes. Can he grab the bragging rights of beating Ryan Turk in that really epic Escort Mark II? Here we go, send it. So here we go now, Ryan Turk, a really nimble, light-footed, tight driver in this incredible Escort that is, it's like a, a, it's a Mark II Escort that's been given a giant steroid injection. With the haunches, with the obviously physical demeanor, and then a 333 horsepower original. It's a Millington Ford Escort engine that's just been modified. Looks like they are neck and neck as Ryan Turk. There you go, you're seeing Luke Woodham around the checkered flag barrel. Ryan Turk into the Samco Asteroid. They are like twins. They are just, and of course, they only, only, the only thing is Ryan lights. Turk has headlights. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan Turk has got the advantage of not having to use the force. Oh, Look how man. tiny he is there. Ryan to, Turk flawless on you, that spin cycle. You've got to think with a, a, a driver like that, in a car like that, driving as tight as that, he's got to be so difficult to beat. Ryan Turk taking down Luke Woodham there. We'll see what kind of penalties are assessed or will be given. Now that's the first. It's unusual seeing uh, Luke Woodham coming in second. 57.09, a 57.09 and a 59.3. Let's walk us through it here, Eddie. So here we go. Look, at see, see the carbon fiber. It's the muscular Escort Mark II with those flared wheel archers. And he's in there just about two seconds ahead of last year and this year's champion, and therefore record holder here at the Gymkhana. <laughs> you you got to think, Luke's a little exhausted. Yeah, he's probably running off adrenaline, but <laughs> Ryan Turk, he's... He, uh, you know, did some Bernies, did a demo, ripped around with Ken Block. He's been chilling all day. So here we go. Here's the second half of this hero battle. Turk yeah. versus Woodham. Yeah. Escort Mark II versus S14. Yeah, and uh, as Jared said, um, Luke is running on bravado now. Yes, which could be good or bad. But I have to think Turk's been, uh, he's been chilling all day as well outside of some demos here and there. This is the rear wheel drive hero battle. And are we in with Ryan now in this? Is that the, the, the passenger or are we in, in with Luke? I think we're in with Luke. As Woodham brings it in, they are again mirroring each other. Now, now watch this spin cycle. Ryan Turk, I saw him in practice earlier. He hit the tire, the tire barrel yesterday, but, uh, but today, man, he was just flawless. So here we go. Looks like Turk's got the jump on Woodham. Turk so characteristically look how tight he is. He is that that is the most intimate we've seen anybody be with those giant tractor tires. So Turk finishes. Oh what a, it says what would him do a slow burnout crawl <laughs> across the finish just for some added flair. He just knows it's in the bag. Oh man. Let's see. Hey, hats off. Look at that. 57.4, a 57.4 and a 103 for Woodham. Mathematically, obviously Woodham has a larger number, Ryan Turk, but penalties. I didn't really see anything. It's hard to see in the Let's dark. See. There are any cones wow. or the cans. Uh, I think I think Luke knew it. Uh, they're both clean. So uh, and there the it is, drift Ryan. legend, Ryan Turk has uh, brought in a clean 154.56. That is an absolutely blistering time. I think that's the fastest time we've seen all day. Unbelievable run there by Ryan Turk. 154.56 defeats Luke Woodham's 202 as Ryan Turk, his only true battle today, and he's undefeated. Ryan oh. Turk's undefeated this weekend. <laughs> My gosh, yeah.
Um, Ryan got so close to those giant tractor tires. I think he could have. I think he could have just leant out of the car and licked them. Right. I mean, he was absolutely unstoppable. And the only way that Luke Woodham could, uh, the only thing that he could get, that he could get on Ryan uh, Turk this time was just to create more smoke. It was a very, very stylish finish. The most stylish finish that we've had. But my gosh, Ryan Turk left Luke Woodham for dust in that uh, in that last bragging rights final. So, are you ready? So, are you ready for the huge one? This is the battle of the monsters. Well, the battle with the monster, Dmitry Shribny against Ken Block in that incredible Unicorn Mustang. This should be a fun one to watch. Ken Block, Dimitri Shribny. Dimitri said, you know, he, he, he might not have been, you know, he said he was confident in that interview prior to going to the finals. Can you beat him? Yeah, I could beat him. But now, going against Ken Block, he's even more confident. Like we yeah. said, that bravado that Luke Woodham has, I think Dimitri just adopted that from Woodham. Yeah, Dimitri definitely. He, he's, he's, a lot of this is, must be about timing as well. It's not, it's not about sort of uh, shooting your bolt too early. You've got to sort of time your, uh, your greatness and save the best till last. It's a crescendo, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's, it's just great to see just all the... Uh, all the drivers are just building up here and, and, the, and the vehicles, obviously not so much for riding the all-wheel drive as the Subarus were just so dominant. And, but uh, it's great to see now, here we go, Ken Block, can he hold it down in the Hoonicorn? So this Hoonicorn, for those not in the know, a 1965 car that has been so tricked out and modified, it is the only all-wheel drive at 845 brake horsepower. Just imagine that. This is uh, beyond Bugatti Veyron territory. Incredible. Watch this thing rotate on those 1552 wheels. Pirelli tires staying warm. Around the bollard is Ken Block, the head Hoonigan in charge. Mirroring each other as they go down Gasoline Alley. Into the checkered flag, double stack barrel. Look at the tachometer working its magic as Ken Block pulls his, his copper colored. E-break. You've got to fancy Dimitri in the slightly more maneuverable Shirley car. And I, I think he's just slightly nudging ahead of the great man. Look at this, Dimitri Shribny getting the jump on the head. Hoonigan in charge. Can he take down Ken Block? Dimitri crosses the finish line first. Whoa, Whoa coming in hot. Those brakes being put to the test. Dimitri got a, a tiny, maybe couple of inch overhang there in the end zone, but I think you're allowed that, so we're 56, okay. 56.1. Wow. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Two very sexy times. So KB 56.86 and Dimitri with a 56.1. So let's have a look at them again. Obviously the raw horsepower, the 855 horses under the bonnet got the great man Ken off the blocks faster but Dimitri he is no slouch and he is just nudged ahead of him because his car's just that much more maneuverable Ken has got more car to get around those that that complicated course it's things are so tight and both boys have kept it clean so uh, both of them in at 56 which is phenomenal so they have swapped they are mirrored we are looking at at bragging rights final, all-wheel drive, Dmitry Shribny against the great, the mighty Ken Block, who is out of the block first as ever. All right, so here we go. The open face helmet showing you the expressions on KB's face. And the explosions around the track. It's amazing here. The atmosphere is incredible. There's fireworks, Roman candles are <laughs> cascading across the track as these two cars are mirroring each other. The uh, the great Ken Block is actually his horsepower has got him out first and he's slightly in front, but Dimitri's always worrying him. Remember, just about 0.7 seconds separate Dimitri and Ken Block. Can Ken Block go faster in and out of the spin cycle? Right now, they're about mirroring each other. Ken Block with a bit of a sloppy swing. Now brings it into the tractor tire barrel. Ken Block, is he looking over to the other side as Dimitri? Brings it wide, Ken Block brings it in. Can he grab the traction? No! Ken's car. He Dimitri, was... whoa! whoa! 
coming in hot as Ken Block getting a little loosey goosey there in the Hoonicorn. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't have enough horse analogies, right? 845 ponies coming at your face. Wow. Jeez, that's hard to stop, regardless of how big your brake rotors are. Yeah, there's some, some silky skills and balletic moves from uh, the, the crew there to avoid that incredible car. Well, I know even for fun, Ken would love to get the victory, but I think it was a victory overall for everybody here in the building. Santa Pod Raceway, as he's uh, taking a shot here, you could see Dimitri Shrivny. He's going to be stoked on the other side. Ken Block going to step out of this 845 horsepower unicorn. Would you please make some noise as he steps out of side of this beast of a vehicle, the monster. Head Hooner going to charge. Ken Block. Up front and close and personal, and there it is. Dimitri Shrivny defeats Ken Block by just about one and a half seconds. Man, Eddie, that was that was awesome to watch. Amazing, and once again, that was one right at the last, the very last one. And we'll see them. And Ken always comes out of the block first you, with that amount of horsepower. You can't not. But then look, he's he. He came into that very, very last obstacle, and Ken was actually, the front of his car was sniffing those <laughs> giant tractor tires. And he came into that first, but Dimitri, just with that edge of maneuverability, just, just pipped him. And uh, Ken, obviously, very keen to get back into the stable there. So much fun down here again, Dimitri Shrivny, Ken Block. So the party and the disco ball continues. It's on. It was such a great day. So let's throw it down to the men of the hour, Ken Block and Dimitri Shrivny. Well, what an incredible day. Ken, what a way to finish. Dimitri, we'll get to you in a second. But Ken, a fantastic weekend. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Great racing with all these guys. Uh, the course was actually really good once it kind of dried out. But really, uh, good good job to this guy. He kicked ass. I, I, you know, I did the best job I could out there. This car is a little big for doing this. But I, I did a, the quickest time I possibly could out there. And uh, he, he beat me. So good job to him. And I uh, hope Hopefully uh, be back, do a little setup work on this thing and try and beat them next time. Well, first time you've raced it in the UK, so what was it like? Uh, first time I've raced this car at all. Everything that we've done this, with this car has all been about the filming and the demos and all that sort of stuff. So today was the first time I actually made a suspension change to this car. We're trying to get some more time out of it, but uh, just didn't have enough time to really play with it and, and get more out of it. But, you know, I'm not making excuses. This guy did a great job. All the drivers did an amazing job. It was fun to watch everyone and, and uh, fun to watch this guy, man. He's quick. Certainly was an incredible weekend for Dimitri. It would seem that this weekend is your moment. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who came here. I want to say a special thank you to Ken Block for, as I say, to bring this event into the world, you know, because if not him, we wouldn't be here. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> a man with very few words, but you certainly don't need many to show the performance this weekend. So you are the 2015 champion, and you had the hero battle in the bag as well. Uh, um, yes, sir. <laughs> so, sorry, I missed the part. I think my mind is just blown at the moment. Just say yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just say yes, indeed. Now, Ken, can you sum up the weekend for us? Ah, uh, well, you know, it was a really good time. Great to race with all these guys. Amazing that all these fans come out and are really knowledgeable and really enjoy watching us race. So thank you, everyone, for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for talking to us, guys. Well, that was Jim Carner Grid 2015 from down here. Thanks, Kiri. She's been an absolute trooper. Let's hear it for Kiri. So she was with uh, the great man, the mighty Ken Block, and uh, the uh, Dimitri Shrivny. Yeah, the, have, I have to say, the mightier man this evening. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you never know how it's going to go. And he, he took that right at the last, right at the last moment. He was tighter than the north end of a southbound swan. That's pretty tight. That's real tight. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very, very tight. <laughs> so it's been an incredible day. I mean, as a, as a, as a virgin to this incredible sport, um, I, I've had such an amazing day. I, I've seen, as the back of your T-shirt says, piston punishing. I've seen a lot of piston punishing. I've seen <laughs> gear bending. I've seen turbo thrashing. It's been a really exciting day. And 
such a family, such a great vibe as well between not just the the, uh, the people, the drivers and the pilots, but everybody around. Huge smiles on faces here. Yeah, like Ken said, the fans are really educated. They're knowledgeable about the vehicles, the cars, and the scene here in, in UK and, and around you know Europe. I can't wait for this to really penetrate different parts of the globe. We were in Madrid, you know, the previous two years, but I'm really seeing Jim Connor grid grow and expand outside of Europe and UK and Spain and obviously you know just all over I can't wait to see this really expand so Monster Energy and Gymkhana Grid is truly a, a sanctioning body an event that really will will grow by leaps and bounds for coming years so uh, it's been a pleasure obviously working with Kiri and, and, and you Eddie and uh, getting to educate you on, on obviously the sport the cars the builds the uniqueness and the run what you brung attitude because obviously you being you know in music and being a petrol head run what you brung right so we're going to go back down to our trooper who is out there in the cold with, uh, tell us who he's fused with. Ryan Turk and Luke Woodham. I am indeed. I am with Ryan and Luke. Well, Luke, we'll start with you first. The smile has not gone anywhere. So you're now two-time <laughs> champion, 2014, 2015. The grin's not going to go for a while, is it? No, that's here to stay. <laughs> um, that was a really close battle. And it's really dark out here. <laughs> <laughs> and with no lights, it doesn't really help. Oh, they broke. <laughs> no, it's awesome. And it's a privilege to drive against these drivers. And yeah, really enjoyed it. And this grin is going to stay. <laughs> well, talking about the hero battle, Ryan, that was the first time you raced the car as well. So what was it like? Uh, it was phenomenal. I, uh, I was just trying to get comfortable in a car all weekend. And I knew I, I knew I'd put it down against Luke, who's been just super consistent and on point and laying down some of the best times of the weekend. And and I knew I was going to have to pull out all the stops, and I usually perform a lot better under pressure, and it, it wound up happening. So I got to thank uh, the Hoonigans and Ken for bringing me out, my first Gymkhana ever, and, uh, you know, I couldn't have ended on a better note. And thanks to uh, Monster for putting on such an awesome event and all the fans that showed up to support all the drivers here today. Well, it has been an incredible event. If you could sum it up, because obviously yesterday pouring with Wayne, what a way to finish today, though. Yeah, it was. Uh, we, we battled the elements here with the cold and the wet and, uh, you know, almost hitting a couple walls myself and uh, it's just uh, you know the drivers had to had to push through a lot of elements and it's just uh, you know you got to experience those pressures to uh, to have make it you know feel that good at the end of the day. Now Luke if you could sum up the weekend how would you? Words can't describe it. Um, <laughs> to do this again it was like a dream a couple of days ago yeah now it's happened so Big smile. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. So there we are. Ryan, the Titanus Turk. Oh, and wow. And Luke, the Jedi Woodham. Ryan, the Titanus Turk. And Luke the Jedi Woodham with uh, with Kiri at trackside, and so Luke Woodham, a record breaker now. Yeah, the two-time Jim Connor Grid winner, and and just just a just he's growing up to be a fine fine young gentleman, and it's just great to see him. And here's that S here's that S chassis vehicle, you know, and and I think. For those fans that are watching or aspiring Jim Connor racers, you got to think that the Toyota Corolla is a serious option with that Croatian crusher of Marco just getting, just sitting outside and not getting a podium spot, but earning a lot of respect from his racers in that Toyota Corolla. And massive respect to Ryan Turk because that boy has come from uh, from normal drifting, right, into this Jim Connor category. So he's 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 not used to this. This is something that he's not used to. He's coming into this blind kind of thing. new type of event. You know, obviously being in UK, that foreign element, new vehicle, maiden voyage in that vehicle, getting handed the keys to such a beautiful vehicle. I mean, a one-off body kit, one-off car. So a lot of pressure on Ryan Turk's shoulders. He's a hell of a driver, isn't he? He, yeah, must, be, he must be astonishing at, the, at what he actually does. I mean, he actually does this. I mean, it, it just being a pilot, just getting more seat time, that's why, that's why I think really Luke Woodham, he does compete in drifting as well among a lot of these drivers. But preparing your vehicle to be a Swiss Army knife to be in drifting, to be in Gymkhana, you know, it, that's, that's what really shows you who the professionals are and who the winners are going to be. And I think Luke Woodham just had the best package, his mind, his weapon, and his machinery. And it seems that uh, he put it all together here for, for, for the overall deal. Amazing. And another shot of the uh, beautiful full moon reminds me that this is the center of the universe for <laughs> any man, and it usually is a man, that has ever pulled a handbrake turn in a Sainsbury's car park. 
Well, yep, as we are getting set for our podium ceremony, uh, just just again from yesterday to today, our fans, the lights, the, the fandemonium, as I like to call it, it's, it's just really cool to see the all-wheel drive, the progression from four years ago here at Santa Pod Raceway. And it, the, the Santa Pod Raceway four years ago, going to Madrid, seeing the variety of drivers, and, and I really, truly hope and believe that we will be seeing Jim Conn at grid in other countries and other places. Yes. yes, more power to its collective elbow. So we've had fandemonium, you've heard from the man himself. And I think we've had, we, we've had some very sexy driving. I think you could probably say we've had some Ahoon Tang. <laughs> oh man, that, that was off the charts right there. That was, that was good, I love this. Man, you, you want to come to the States and just announce you got some, you got some I don't know if that would make it on. You can, on, you can have that one for free. All right, that one's complimentary, compliments. All right, so, well, thanks, Eddie, Eddie TM. As, uh, yeah, it, it, would definitely, it would definitely aim to please. It was definitely a, a, a people pleaser as, as this event was just some really fun driving and as it, as it progressively dried out through the day, the fans stuck around, endured the cold. And and I have to I have to say Marco was really a great moment here and but also right out of the gate or excuse me not out of the gate but here put an exclamation point on an exciting day for rear wheel drive was Turk and Woodham. We're just seeing a, a nice little montage now some of the great moments that we've had today are highlights if you will. We'll see some triumphs and maybe a few disasters too. Yeah, that Woodham and Turk battle was really fun, and it, it just goes to show you, like you said, that the, the seat time for Woodham took him to the top, but uh, w when you get Turk, who's, who's a force to be reckoned with, he could uh, definitely ruin your day. So it was, uh, it, I'm sure it was definitely uh, a brag. It's going to be a bragging moment tonight when we party <laughs> when we party back at the hotel or find a, find a pub, right? So look at that. Rolling through the sparks, the Escort Mark II gets a... Uh, uh, a shower, a shower of, sparks. of sparks, yes. Absolutely perfect. As we saw the Hunicorn and Dmitry Shribny, the Ukrainian, and you throwing out your actual uh, Russian to him, and uh, that, that kind of <laughs> flipped me for a script. But I'm sure, as Ken said in the interview, he's not he's not taking anything away from Dmitry, he's saying that car wasn't purposely built for competition, but it was purposely built for doing awesome things yeah. and it did just that i think people you know even you this morning seeing that car i think you were a bit baffled on how amazing that piece of machinery is oh it's it's jaw dropping i mean i had to pick my jaw up off the tarmac when i when i was near that car i mean from the arches to the wheels to the details inside those are those are the things that i think really just make you know a, a car turn into a masterpiece or something that just transcends being a car it's a piece of art and, and it's got those little, those little scrapes and scratches that give it character. Well, he got he got a few this weekend, and I'm sure he's not going to be super psyched on that. But he's still a busy man. That unicorn still is not done for the season. He has plenty of things planned for the the, the the event, or excuse me, for the rest of the year. As we are getting ready for our Jim Grid podium ceremony, and we have some very unique trophies to give out, some cash, some prizes. And uh, man, Eddie Temple Morris, Jared DeAnda here. It's been it's been a pleasure, man. And it's, and I'm telling you, the party does not stop here for Jim Connor or or for us this, t tonight this evening. No, certainly not. And I'm just blown away. I thought I'd seen everything until I <laughs> until I saw a 150 mile an hour tractor. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, not tractor. Lawnmower. lawnmower. I saw a 150 mile an hour lawnmower right. today. Yeah, no big deal. That's that's cute. Remember, uh, keep the conversation going at Jim Connor Grid, hashtag Jim Connor Grid if you're watching at home or in person. Thank you for joining us here at Santa Pod Raceway for the fourth installment of Jim Connor Grid. And these, uh, these gentlemen definitely worked it out from all wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and even the buggies who uh, we, didn't, we didn't air on the TV program, but uh, we saw some major stars out there, including Nick Hamilton, Shane Lynch, Steve Pete, uh, three time mountain bike downhill champion, Liam Doran. He's a uh, four-time X Games medalist Andre Villa, who's who's used to doing freestyle motocross on two wheels, he uh, grabbed grabbed the wheel of these buggies, and then uh, Riku Taco is our winner.
European battle. There can only be three people up here on the podium. We're going to start with the all-wheel drive category. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise. Put your hands together for third on the podium, Mr. Jake Archer. In second place, once again, I'm going to ask you guys to go absolutely crazy for Mr. Lewis Jones. So Jake Archer, unfortunately, you know, just uh, just he, he got kind of handed that victory there in third place. But uh, it seemed that uh, he, he's still excited about it. He's like, oh, third place again, but he's still here on the podium. Yeah, still yeah. stoked. It's noticeable, and, uh, actually, that the, Ken, even the losers have huge smiles on their faces. Award the trophy to the number one spot. So there we yeah. have that there heavy metal only trophy. There's that can stand atop the top of this podium. Please make some noise for Mr. Dmitry Shrivny! And to award the trophy... Me again. Mr. Ken Block, <laughs> the man of the hour. And uh, my clothing definitely isn't waterproof. Well, so there I you go, Dimitri Shrivny, Lewis Jones, Jake Archer, and Ken Block awarding. Look at those medieval oh. Monster Energy Gymkhana grids, these gladiators what? of Gymkhana grid, Someone's and the all-wheel drive class. Dimitri Shrivny, again, Lewis Jones, and Jake Archer. <laughs> so yes, the, the heavy metal, the heavy metal the trophies have been given, off. and uh, Dimitri Shrivny got the axe that, that, uh, that Jared hey, Dimitri, wanted. Yeah, I know. Well, no, he got the helmet. Second place was the axe. And oh, third place was the sword. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I wanted the axe. So if, I would I would have defaulted to second uh, place. I want to be Lewis Jones right now. But only thing is, I, I carry my luggage. I don't check luggage. So hey, Dimitri, I, I would basically well. I'd have to forfeit it because I, I couldn't take that on a plane. That's a weapon. Something a, a, a prop from the Model 300. This is for Sparta. <laughs> Oh man, look at that, 5,000 pounds. I don't know if he's crying or if he's got champagne in his eyes, but obviously that's, that's gonna change things for him a little bit. Yeah, that's definitely going to, uh, to buy a few more tires, isn't it? Yeah, tires are definitely a hot commodity around the pits, you but uh, you know, looking for more horsepower, because from last year to this year, I asked him, you know, what have you changed? He said, bigger uh, tires. So, you know, it obviously worked out. Maybe throw some more horsepower, throw some, you know, more tires at it, like you said. But, uh, you know, this so he's, he's figured out out the equation of the all-wheel drive class because he's been here before. Drive category once again. These guys have battled so all the way through are going, to be here. We are going uh, to make our way onto rear-wheel drive. Adam Elder. Here comes our rear-wheel drive position. winners. And there it is, In Adam the Elder. Drive category. The Terminator grabs third. And I think if we can find him, we're going to get a man called Ryan Turk to give away the awesome trophies. Locating our victors here for third, second, and first place well, in the uh, rear-wheel drive class. Adam Elder? Adam? Has anyone seen Adam Elder? Adam Elder just maybe he maybe celebrating a bit early. He must have known he's gone through into the... Into the we have. We've announced him. He is here. He's the <laughs> Adam Elder, last seen oh, with a magnum of champagne, Mr. heading into the sunset. He is here. Mr. Adam Elder, congratulations. Third place Lovely. in rear-wheel drive category. Get yourself up there on the podium bewildered by what's happening today. Adam hiding his obvious our, disappointment uh, at being third. Up. It was hotly contested. A Ryan Turks coming out here with the trophies as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Mr. Danny Cross, runner up in the rear wheel drive category. Danny Cross, somebody who took it from the LCQ all the way to the top. So a great effort from him. Again, had to fight through rain, had to fight through the conditions, even a popped engine coming up just a week ago. Trophy. And he grabs second place as Those Ryan Turk presents him with that awesome. trophy. A hatchet made out of a Conrod. And finally, there is one man who's going to take this top spot. And uh, it's a second win for him here at Jim Carner. Absolute legend. He's been with it since the very beginning. He really is the poster child of what can happen from grassroots all the way up to this top level of racing. And he's grown, as has the sport of Jim Carner. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the 2015 winner of Jim Carner for twice in a row, Mr. Luke Woodham.
Luke Woodham grabs the victory back to back yeah, no, and gets that top podium spot. Again, he's going to get cash, he's going to get prizes, and he's going to look at that, that smile. Signature Woodham smile. And Brian Turk gives him the trophy well. and the cash. Absolutely, the signature Woodham smile. Your roof. But uh, uh, made even Jordan wider by the top. fact that he's a record breaker, the only Legend pilot that has won twice. The 2015 rear wheel drive Jim Carner champions. And there it is, the smile says it all. Woodham epic weekend grabs first. Racing. Danny Cross second. And Adam Elder grabs third here at Jim Connor Grid, the European Gauntlet 2015. And of course, the this is Santa <laughs> There you go. You can see again the, the, the kind of Adam Elder, a little bit of hesitation there. Oh, man. Given how cold it is, I don't know if I would want to be sprayed by champagne right now. And their Elder. I don't think he's got any choice right now. Yeah. But, uh, you know. As we take a look once again, the rear-wheel drive celebration of Ryan Turk and the all-wheel drive hero battle of Dimitri and Block. Well, that's a wrap here, Eddie. Thank you so much, man. Yes, it's great, great to work with you and a, a huge yeah, shout out to all the crew here. It's been an amazing, amazing day.